Hello friends. This is Fanfic Universe. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto awakened the dormant bloodline power? Here is short summary. Blood contains power. Blood creates connections. Uzumaki Naruto has awakened the dormant power of his blood. This new power will change the world. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Uzumaki Naruto was often alone and always unsure as to the reason why. The village of Konohagakure had reached the collective decision to make the young child a social pariah. The burden Naruto unknowingly bore made the majority of the village uncomfortable in his presence. A small portion of the village failed to separate Uzumaki Naruto, the human from the nine-tailed fox, the demon he contained. These individuals viewed Naruto as the fox reborn, but could not act on their beliefs because Naruto was favored by the Hokage whose word was absolute law. Thus, Naruto was safe from angry mobs, physical violence and other abuses. The Hokage's will could not force the citizens to accept Naruto, however. Unable to forget the terrible wrath of the Kyuubi or ignore a profound sense of terrible destiny surrounding the child, the citizens of Konoha pushed Naruto away. He was shunned. In shops, he was not overcharged but was instead simply ignored. Society's indifference taught Naruto to buy only the absolute essentials or whatever he could easily choose for himself. Naruto's social isolation gave birth to a deeply seated need for acknowledgement. This led Naruto to perform elaborate and disruptive pranks. While the pranks granted Naruto the acknowledgement he desperately craved, they also ironically served to further isolate him. The hyperactive child was often discouraged from using the popular public training grounds. Jonin were concerned that Naruto would interfere with the training of Konoha's genin teams. Once again, Naruto learned quickly and discovered several rarely used outlying, training grounds. Thus, he thought he was alone when his life changed. Naruto's life-altering moment started innocently enough. He had a headache and occasionally he would shiver as if cold. Stupid cold. Naruto grumbled to himself after trying to copy Sasuke's trick with Shuriken. I can do better than this. Naruto pouted as he walked over to the training posts to collect his Shuriken. This dumb cold is making my vision all blurry. A fresh shiver made its way up Naruto's spine. Suddenly, the shiver reached his head and Naruto burned. The boy cried out in pain as the fire behind his eyes intensified. Naruto knew that no one would hear him and his cries would go unanswered, but he still desperately wished that someone would help him. All he wanted was for someone to care. Hayuga Hanada had finally tracked down Naruto. She wanted to give Naruto the textbook he had forgotten in class today. More than that, Hanada wanted to thank Naruto for trying to protect her from the three older academy students who had bullied her before the start of the term. Naruto had actually been hurt by the older boys. Hanada felt horrible that Ko had dragged her away before she had the chance to help Naruto. Today, Hanada would make amends. Today, she would become Naruto's friend. Naruto's scream of pain shattered Hanada's plans. She threw caution to the wind and ran to where her Byakugan had seen Naruto. Hanada shot from the bushes and saw her hero laying on the ground clutching his head. Naruto-kun. She cried out in alarm. What's wrong? I feel like I'm on fire. Naruto wailed and finally opened his eyes. Hanada's breathing quickened and she was nearly having a panic attack, but she moved forward. She owed Naruto too much to fail him now. Gee. Give me your hand. I, I'll get you some help. Hanada offered and Naruto accepted. The Hyuga heiress half carried Naruto the more commonly traveled paths. She was searching desperately for anyone that could help. Finally, she saw a heavy set Jonin with an unzipped flak jacket. Help, he needs help. The Jonin heard Hanada's yell and rushed over. He noticed she was carrying Naruto and gasped. If something is wrong with the seal, my name is Kandan Tekuno. I'm going to take you two to the hospital. Several hours later, Naruto was resting peacefully in a hospital bed. Outside of his room, the Hokage waited for Kandan and Naruto's doctor to give a report. Hokage sama, I found Hayuga Hanada carrying Uzumaki Naruto out of training ground 17 around 4 pm. Uzumaki Naruto appeared feverish and was barely conscious. There was no evidence of a struggle, ninjutsu or genjutsu. Young lady Hanada obviously was concerned for her friend. Kaden Tekuno reported. 
The Hokage turned to Naruto's doctor. Can you confirm John and Kaden's report? Of course, Hokage sama. Uzumaki Naruto was not attacked in any form or fashion. There was no evidence of chakra exhaustion. However, the doctor trailed off. Doctor, I do not like the sound of, however, Serutobi Hiruzen said firmly. However, given Hinata sama's description of Naruto's symptoms and my own observations, I have a theory. The doctor paused for a moment. Uzumaki Naruto may have activated a dojutsu. The Hokage narrowed his eyes. I knew both of Naruto's parents. Neither of their families possessed any form of bloodline limit, much less a dojutsu. Without, without access to Naruto's genealogical information I can neither confirm nor discredit this hypothesis, Hokage-sama. My own diagnosis and Hanada-sama's testimony strongly implies that Naruto did in fact activate some kind of bloodline limit. Most likely, this bloodline limit would be a dojutsu. Hiruzen considered the doctor's words. We do not have enough evidence to proceed with this theory. Naruto must be observed closely. A new, a rarely seen, dojutsu would be a powerful benefit to Konoha. And it would go a long way to making Konoha realize Naruto's worth as a human being. The years passed and Naruto quickly forgot his collapse. The profound significance of the event did not register. Naruto continued to live his life. Naruto adopted the owner of the Ichiraku ramen stand and his daughter into his unofficial family. Tuchi and Ayame treated him kindly, helped him with his homework and fed him the greatest food in the world at a discount. Naruto won over Aruka sensei and dreamed that the relationship he shared with the teacher was what having a big brother or even a father was like. The boy with dreams of becoming Hokage continued his rivalry with Uchiha Sasuke. The rivalry was just another manifestation of Naruto's desperate need for acknowledgement. This need drove him to pursue Haruno Sakura. A part of Naruto's mind knew Sakura would never give him the acknowledgement he truly desired. But she confirmed his existence. She made the world realize Uzumaki Naruto existed even as she belittled him. Naruto had numerous other acquaintances and friends. Tragically, he was unaware that one of his classmates, Hayuga Hanada, not only acknowledged his existence, but valued it. G. Good luck, N. Naruto-kun. Hanada spoke softly after Mizuki called Naruto for his third genin exam. Huh. Oh, thanks Hanada. Naruto smiled at the shy girl. Hanada was the last person Naruto had expected to wish him luck. She was so quiet and would often go all red and look away whenever Naruto tried to talk to her. He shrugged off the puzzle of Hanada and entered the exam room. Iruka sensei looked up from behind his desk. Naruto returned the smile, but the boy's attention was focused solely on the rows of Hita aid on the desk. Naruto, are you ready? Naruto smiled triumphantly and began. His transformation technique created a flawless copy of Mizuki sensei. Naruto performed the body replacement without a hitch. However, Naruto was still not proficient enough with the clone technique. Iruka. Maybe we should pass him. Naruto managed to make a perfect clone for a few seconds at least. Mizuki negotiated with his old friend. I would love to, but I can't. Every other student made at least three perfect clones that lasted for a minute at least. I'm sorry Naruto, we can't pass you. Aruka apologized. Naruto simply nodded and left through the back door. Naruto was so devastated, he didn't even retreat to his usual spot on the swing. Instead, he found an isolated balcony and just stared at the Hokage mountain. He really wanted to pass you. Naruto jumped a bit at Mizuki's sudden appearance. Then why didn't he? Naruto wasn't sure what he felt at that moment. It wasn't betrayal. He knew that no matter what, Aruka sensei wanted the best for Naruto. Mizuki sat down next to his student and put a comforting hand on his shoulder. Aruka wants to make sure you are ready. That's why we're going to let you take a special exam. Naruto. Your scores were good enough in everything but the clone technique to pass. So, when you pass this special test, you'll be allowed to graduate. What do I have to do? Naruto's eyes held so much hope. For a moment, Mizuki thought he saw something else in Naruto's eyes. It wasn't the fox. It was something, else. The teacher pushed those thoughts aside. After tonight, Mizuki would never have to worry about Naruto's damn eyes ever again. It is good to see that you are awake, Naruto. The Hokage's voice froze Naruto in place. He had been attempting to leave his room to find a mirror. Naruto wanted more than anything to see himself proudly wearing his Hitai 8. 
He also needed proof he was still Uzumaki Naruto. There was no reason to doubt Uruka Sensei, but Naruto needed to view the new world with his own eyes. Yeah. Naruto looked away. Is it true? The Hokage sat down on a bench and motioned for Naruto to do the same. Mizuki was wrong. You are not the demon fox. You are Uzumaki Naruto and you have protected Konoha from the moment of your birth. The fourth Hokage had faith in you and in your goodness. He knew that you would be able to keep the Kyubi at bay. The fourth really believed that. Naruto asked. Hiruzen smiled. Not only did the fourth believe in you, I believe in you and Aruka believes in you. Thanks old man. Naruto smiled softly and Serutobi couldn't miss the delicate light in Naruto's eyes. Suddenly, the light flared with excitement and Naruto leapt off the bench. Watch this. You won't believe how awesome the jutsu I learned from the scroll is. Naruto quickly flashed the hand seal and shouted, Cage Bunshin no jutsu. Six Naruto's puffed into existence. The third leaned forward and whispered something to one of the clones. Dispel them, please. Hiruzen said to the original. Naruto nodded and the clones disappeared. A heartbeat later, Naruto's face lit up. Really? You'll really take me for ramen later? Wait, how did I know that? Naruto slipped from excitement to confusion as he spoke. It's an ability of the shadow clones. The clones will transfer the memories of anything they learn or experience back to their creator. The Hokage explained. That is so cool. The newly promoted Genin jumped around. But you're still going to take me for ramen later? The old cage grinned and laughed. I promise, Naruto. I'll take you for ramen. Naruto was strolling through the streets of Konoha in one of the best moods of his life. He was a ninja. After two failures, he truly appreciated what he had accomplished. Naruto raised his hand to his Hitai 8, but decided against taking it off to stare at it. The momentary distraction caused Naruto to plow into someone. I, I'm sorry. Naruto heard a girl squeak out. The second Naruto's wits returned, he realized he had run into Hanada. No need to say sorry. I ran into you. I'm the one who needs to say sorry. So, uh, sorry. Naruto apologized while helping Hanada to her feet. Much to Naruto's confusion, Hanada blushed furiously and held the hand Naruto had touched to her. A, apology accepted Naruto-kun. Hanada smiled warmly. Naruto immediately felt himself pick up. It was a nice change of pace to have a girl smile at him for something other than being satisfied at the beating she just handed out. You passed. Naruto looked up with an amused grin. Yep. I passed after taking an extra credit exam. I, I'm glad you passed. Hanada whispered. That threw Naruto for a loop. Hanada was a mystery to Naruto. He wasn't sure what to make of her other than she was very shy and nice. Thanks. Silence reigned, but it was a comfortable silence. What do you think our teams will be like? I'm not sure, but, I, I-H, hope, that I, I am on, your team. Hanada quickly forced out the last bit of her statement as the pair arrived at the academy. Naruto stopped in the doorway. Really? He couldn't think of much more to say after Hanada's quiet and fast-paced declaration. Hanada did not trust her voice or her ability to remain standing and nodded before heading to her seat. Naruto was mulling over the puzzle of Hanada when he entered the classroom. He started to head over to where Sasuke was sitting. Naruto wanted to show the world that he was the Uchiha's equal. He made it six steps before a pressure built behind Naruto's eyes. I should sit down. Naruto flopped into the nearest empty chair. It was next to a girl named Amy. Naruto had never spoken to her and she ignored him completely. Why is this pressure so familiar? The pressure was so annoying that Naruto put more pressure on his temples and willed the pressure to disappear. Naruto suddenly felt his eyes shift. The only way Naruto could describe the feeling was by comparing it to stirring ramen. Something had just changed. The familiarity of the change was a bit unnerving to Naruto. I'll have to ask the old man when he takes me out for ramen. As soon as Naruto thought about the feeling, it vanished. The thought was pushed even further from his focus when Uruka sensei entered the room. You okay, Aruka sensei Naruto called out over Sakura and Ino arguing over who would sit next to Sasuke. I'm fine Naruto. We'll talk later. Aruka assured his favorite student. The teacher took a deep breath. Pay attention. The class fell silent. Aruka chuckled and launched into his prepared speech about how proud he was of his students. 
He reached the end of his speech and was pleased to see that only Nara Shikamaru had fallen asleep. Now for the team assignments, Aruka flipped a sheet on his clipboard. Team 1 will consist of Kinjo Amy. Naruto was on the edge of his seat, but after three teams were announced he started to zone out. Team 7 will include Uzumaki Naruto, Aruka announced and Naruto immediately sat straighter. If there was any justice in the world, Naruto was hoping to have Sakura and Hanada on his team. That would be perfect. Haruno Sakura. Naruto clenched his fists, at first in hope, but something else wormed its way in when he heard Sakura's lament about being stuck with Naruto and Uchiha Sasuke. Crap. Naruto grumbled. Sakura's excited blabbering about how love conquered all, and Hanada's visible disappointment twisted Naruto's gut. Aruka finished off the last few teams and Naruto sat and reflected on his situation. The disappointment built and slowly intermingled with annoyance as more and more Jonin instructors came and picked up their teams. Good luck, Hanada. Naruto called out when Team 8 left. Kurinai, the instructor for Hanada's team, shook her head and smiled at Hanada's reaction. Why Kurinai did that completely went over Naruto's head. Naruto expected not to have long to think about the strange action. Instead, he had nearly 20 minutes. It was confusing. Naruto could think of a couple of reasons for Hanada's nervous blushing. One, he didn't want to be true, and the other couldn't possibly be true. Naruto desperately hoped Hanada wasn't aware of the fox. The other thought, that Hanada could be interested in Naruto, was almost too outlandish to even consider. The more he thought, the more the pressure in his eyes built up. Naruto groaned at the pain and rubbed his temples. God damn it! Naruto hissed. Stop that, Naruto! You're disturbing Sasuke kun! Sakura shouted from across the room. Naruto put his head on the desk. I'd love to have my head stop feeling like it was about to explode. Sakura was about to say something else when the door slid open. A masked Jonin stood in the doorway and seemingly smiled with his one visible eye. My first impression is, you all need to lighten up. Meet me on the roof. Kakashi was waiting for Team 7 on the rooftop park. The Jonin carefully observed each of his potential subordinates. He had read their files, but had already known Naruto and Sasuke for years. The son of the White Fang watched as they took their seats. Naruto sat down first. He simply sat, but something was off. Kakashi had always known Naruto to be boisterous and active. Like his mother. Today, he looked like he was out of it. Haruno Sakura sat next and placed herself nearly three feet away from Naruto. Finally, Uchiha Sasuke chose his place. Sasuke did not blatantly separate himself from his team as Sakura had, but he clearly kept his distance. Kakashi thought where Sasuke sat was very telling. The last Uchiha chose to sit higher than Sakura or Naruto. He was consciously or subconsciously placing himself above the others. The Hokage was right. I am going to need some luck on this one. Well, now that we are all here, we'll introduce ourselves. Let everyone know who you are, what you like and don't like. Oh, hobbies and dreams for the future, too. Kakashi greeted. Uh, why don't you start Sensei? Sakura offered. That way we'll have an idea of what we're supposed to do. Kakashi just stared at Sakura before nodded. I'm Hitaki Kakashi. I like things and I dislike things. I enjoy my hobbies. My dreams for the future. Huh, haven't really thought about those. All we got was his name. The three prospective members of Team 7 thought. Kakashi grinned behind his mask. All right, you on the right. Naruto was rubbing his temples again. Huh, me? Kakashi appeared to smile with his visible eye and nodded. Well then, I'm Uzumaki Naruto. I like ramen, especially the ramen from the Ichiraku noodle shop. I don't like how my eyes feel like they have been dipped in hot ramen broth right now. My hobbies are collecting cup ramen brands and training. My dream for the future is to become the greatest Hokage. His eyes? That almost sounds like the symptoms the Hyuga have before their Byakugan activates, but that can't be possible. Neither Minato Sensei nor Kashina had a dojutsu. Might want to have a medic nin check your eyes, Naruto. Kakashi spoke with true concern. You're up next, Missy. Okay. My name is Haruno Sakura. I like, Sakura cast an excited glance to Sasuke and squealed. My hobbies, once again. Sakura glanced over to Sasuke and Kakashi noticed her trace her finger along a notebook. My dream, 
Kakashi fought the urge to groan as Sakura giggled furiously at Sasuke. And I thought Rin started off a bit fangirly, is there anything you don't like? Naruto. Sakura said with conviction. Naruto groaned. So, if I want you to like me I should stop being nice and get a stick up my ass like Sasuke. Normally, Naruto would never snap off at Sakura like that. However, Naruto was very irritable because of the pain behind his eyes. This is feeling more and more like that fever I had when I was little. Before Sakura could go off on Naruto, Kakashi pointed at Sasuke, and finally, Yu Uchiha. Sasuke had not altered his pose since he sat down. His face remained impassive and he hid his behind interlocked hands. I am Uchiha Sasuke. I don't like much and I hate a great deal. Hobbies are a frivolity that I cannot afford. My dream, no, my ambition is to revive my clan and kill a certain man. The reactions of Team 7 were very different. Naruto hoped Sasuke wasn't talking about him. Sakura was gushing over how cool, serious and mysterious Sasuke was. Kakashi, for his part, was concerned that Sasuke was still fixated on killing Itachi. Well, that was fun. I have good news. Tomorrow, at 5 a.m., we'll meet at training ground 3 for our first mission. Kakashi clasped his hands together and spoke excitedly. Naruto, momentarily forgetting about his raging headache, looked up excitedly. Heck yeah. What kind of mission? Survival training. Kakashi was clearly amused with himself. Anyo, Kakashi sensei, we did survival training in the academy. Why do we have to go through that again? The pinket was suddenly very nervous. Well, I could tell you, but you wouldn't like the reason. Kakashi waved off Sakura's concerns glibly. I believe we deserve to know, Sasuke said crisply. Okay, fine. Naruto, please remind Sasuke and Sakura that I did in fact warn them. Naruto nodded at Kakashi's words. The masked Jonin, I smiled. The tests you took at the academy, even the final exam, were just tests to see if you had the potential to be Genin. My survival training will decide whether or not you become Genin. Oh, it gets even better. Better? Sakura laughed nervously at Kakashi's sudden enthusiasm. Yep, better. There's a 66% washout rate. So, out of everyone who graduated today, only three teams will be promoted to full genin. Wonderful, right? I can't believe that is true. Sakura panicked. Kakashi sensei did warn you. Naruto's voice was a bit hollow from his headache. I guess we're done for the day. Kakashi pushed himself away from the railing. I'll see you all bright and early tomorrow. Before I forget, don't eat breakfast. You'll only end up puking. Bye. Kakashi disappeared in a swirl of leaves. His students were all troubled by his news but only Sakura showed any outward emotion. Sasuke was always calm and collected. Naruto would normally be running around in panic bravado, but his headache was too much to bear. He was definitely going to take Kakashi Sensei's advice and go to the doctor. I hope Kakashi Sensei doesn't get too mad at me. Naruto groaned as he ate some toast. I mean, Doc said I had to eat with this medicine. Naruto downed his pill with a glass of non-expired milk. He stumbled through his apartment and gathered his supplies. The genin hopeful yawned loudly as he exited his apartment. Naruto couldn't believe he was up at 4 a.m. He had never woken up this early. Konoha was eerily quiet as Naruto trudged towards training ground 3. The sun hadn't even begun to peek over the horizon when Naruto reached his destination. Good morning Sakura-chan. Naruto tried to put warmth in his voice. Unfortunately, he only managed to add a yawn. Naruto. Sakura greeted with her own yawn. I, uh, I'm sorry about yesterday. I wasn't feeling good and I shouldn't have snapped at you like that. Naruto rubbed at his eyes. It was a nice change of pace to be rubbing sleep out of the corners of his eyes. The pain from yesterday had driven him nuts. Just don't let it happen again. The kunoichi made a dismissive noise as she finished. Must not be a morning person. Naruto thought. A second later, Sakura brightened up considerably. Sasuke kun. The girl yelled and bolted off. And Naruto swings and misses, he corrected himself. Team 7 silently waited for Kakashi sensei. They waited nearly 30 minutes before Sakura bemoaned Kakashi's lateness. Naruto and Sasuke tried to keep loose by stretching. Eventually, even Naruto and Sasuke had slipped into a light sleep. Good morning everyone. Kakashi said as he finally arrived. 
Naruto and Sakura loudly complained to Kakashi about his tardiness. The Jonin repressed a smirk that even Sasuke was visibly perturbed. Kakashi knew the stage was set. He pulled two bells from his pocket. This was going to be fun. Naruto had a bad feeling about the bells. The second Kakashi began to explain the nature of the test Naruto nearly panicked. I've worked too hard. I've struggled every day for this. I can't fail here. Kakashi revealed that anyone who did not recover a bell by noon would be sent back to the academy for another year. Naruto would not allow himself to lose to Sasuke or suffer another setback on his quest to become Hokage. A large portion of Naruto's mind screamed for him to show Kakashi he was ready to be a ninja. Naruto felt his leg muscles tense in anticipation of his attack. However, a conversation Naruto had overheard in the doctor's office stayed his hand. Did you hear copy ninja Kakashi got another team? A Chunin had said. He'll be a good sensei, if they can meet his impossible standards. I mean, there are rumors he was captain of the Anbu Black Ops division. A nurse had replied. There was no way Naruto could win a straight up fight. Naruto retreated into the woods. He needed a plan. I can't go back to the academy. Naruto frowned as he thought of a plan. The details started coalescing and Naruto smiled. I'm going to need a lot of shadow clones. Kakashi was somewhat impressed by Team 7. All three students were hiding very well. The world famous copy ninja had high hopes for this team. He knew Naruto had the potential to be great. Hitaki owed Minato sensei and Kashina too much for Naruto to be anything short of extraordinary. Sasuke also possessed a great deal of potential. Kakashi hoped that he could pull Sasuke away from the path of revenge. Haruno Sakura was from a civilian family, but she had potential. Her chakra control was amazing. Kakashi saw the potential for Sakura to be an amazing medic nin. Suddenly, Naruto burst from his concealment screaming about how he was going to take down Kakashi. Outwardly, Kakashi groaned as he dodged Naruto's frantic strikes. Internally, he was grinning. Naruto reminded the Jonin of Kashina. As expected, Kakashi made short work of Naruto. Kakashi was about to head off to flush Sasuke or Sakura from their hiding places when a brace of shuriken exploded from the tree line. The attack was easy to dodge and Kakashi divined their origin quickly. Naruto. The theory was confirmed when six Naruto's charged from the trees. Good work, Naruto. Your parents would be proud. You just want to separate me from Sasuke-kun, Sakura shrieked. No, I want us all to pass. Naruto pleaded. Sensei said that no matter what one of us will be sent back to the academy. The girl glared Kanai at Naruto. If we get both bells working together maybe we can talk Kakashi Sensei into passing all of us. Naruto tried to follow Sakura as she stormed off. Your optimism won't save you, Naruto. Sakura ran off into the woods to find Sasuke. Naruto sighed before dispelling and sending his memories to the original. No. Sasuke said without sparing Naruto a second glance. Kakashi sensei is a Jonin. The only way we've got a shot at the bells is if we work together. Naruto attempted to reason with Sasuke. I don't need you getting in my way. I have to get one of those bells. I must become a ninja. Listen, you're good, really good, but you aren't on Kakashi sensei's level. None of us are. If we work together at least one of us will pass. Reason was not reaching Sasuke. Naruto decided to appeal to his pride. Forget it. Sasuke grunted and disappeared into the trees. Naruto scuffed his feet before disappearing in a puff of smoke. Naruto leaned against a tree as the memories of the clones returned. Crap. That plan didn't work. I made Jonin, remember? Kakashi asked from the other side of the tree. Double crap. Naruto groaned. But I wasn't talking about that plan. I was just trying to keep you busy. Naruto could tell Kakashi was smiling. Oh? Like I'm going to tell you my plans. Naruto snapped. The snappy reply became a squawk when Naruto found himself tied up. Kakashi strolled around the tree. You're doing very well. Too bad you haven't grabbed a bell. The Jonin patted Naruto on the head before vanishing. The whiskered Jenin hopeful sighed and jerked his head a bit. A shadow clone pulled itself from the underbrush and walked over. We're getting stomped. The clone said sadly as it cut Naruto free. Sakura's scream filled the air. Sakura-chan. Naruto gasped. It's worse than that buddy. We're getting played. 
The clone dispelled and Naruto ran in the direction of the scream. Naruto searched for several minutes before realizing that either Sakura had moved on or Kakashi had somehow managed to disguise Sakura's location. Shadow Clone Jutsu. Naruto created several more clones. All right fellas, you know the plan. The clones scattered. Naruto took off towards Training Ground 3's most famous landmark. It would be a good place to fan out from in Naruto's own search. Naruto paused at the tree line and sighed. Two clones had stumbled upon Sasuke's fight with Kakashi. Sasuke was buried up to his neck in the ground. Naruto choked out a laugh before panicking that he had given his position away to Kakashi. At least the remaining clone had the sense to help Sasuke dig out of the hole. The ringing of the alarm clock was like a physical blow. Team 7 headed out of the forests and was greeted by Kakashi. The masked Jonin led the team over to three posts. In a flash, Sasuke was tied to the post. What was that for? Sasuke-kun was the only one of us who managed to touch a bell. Sakura sputtered in her shock. I've made my decision. Kakashi stated simply as he picked up the two lunchboxes. Only Naruto is going back to the academy. Naruto collapsed and simply stared at the ground. Sakura and Sasuke waffled between shock, relief and vindication. The copy ninja had expected this reaction. Why me? Naruto asked softly. I tried so hard. You should be grateful Naruto. Kakashi said in a stern tone. You are the only one who deserves a second chance. Sasuke and Sakura are being dropped from the program. What? Sasuke and Sakura screamed. Kakashi walked forward. Naruto was the only one of you to think like a ninja. Sakura, when Naruto approached you about working together you berated him and abandoned him. Sasuke, you brushed Naruto off as, beneath you. Naruto was the only one who realized the true objective of this test. Huh. I did? I mean, I am awesome, but what is Kakashi Sensei talking about? Naruto blinked in confusion. Teamwork. Genin must have an understanding of teamwork to succeed. Kakashi barked. Teamwork? Sasuke asked. Yes, teamwork. If you had all come at me like Naruto suggested, you might have gotten a bell. The Jonin stared harshly at the group. Why do you think we put Jenin in squads? Jenin, rookies, must have an instinctive grasp for teamwork. We were set up to fail. Sasuke growled. There were only two bells. Your test was designed to turn us against each other. Kakashi nodded. Exactly. I wanted to see if you could place the needs of the squad above your own individual wants and needs. The squad failed. If a ninja places one's self above the team, you will fail and you will die. Take a good look at this stone. Every name on this stone belongs to a hero of the village, a hero who gave everything for Konoha. My best friends have their names on this stone. How did they get their names on the stone? Naruto asked softly. He wanted to be a hero. He wanted to make a difference. Normally, Naruto would shout this to the heavens. However, Kakashi's tone and the stories he had heard in the doctor's office made Naruto cautious. They died in the line of duty, Sakura whispered. Sakura is right. They sacrificed their lives so that Konoha might live. I'm going to give you one more chance. Naruto and Sakura may eat lunch. I'll be back in 30 minutes. We'll start over and you'll have three hours to get a bell. No one may feed Sasuke. If you feed Sasuke, I'll fail all of you. No complaining. I make the rules, you follow them. Kakashi commanded before disappearing in a swirl of leaves and dust. Naruto flashed a hand seal. Six Naruto clones appeared and spread out. A few seconds later, the whiskered Genin closed his eyes. Okay, Kakashi sensei's not around. What are you talking about? Sasuke groaned. He was starving and his hunger was not helping his mood. Here, take a bit of food. We'll work together, get the bells and force Kakashi to pass all of us. This will only work if we work together and are at our best. That means, Sasuke has to eat. But, Sakura looked torn between helping Sasuke and obeying Kakashi. Look, Sasuke is the most talented one out of our group. This team won't stand a chance without the stuck-up bastard. Naruto spoke firmly. He held up his lunch to Sasuke. Now eat and let's kick ass. Sasuke accepted the food with a nod. Sakura shyly offered her food. It was a chance to help Sasuke and she wouldn't pass it up. The sky suddenly became very dark and lightning streaked across the sky. What do you think you three are doing? 
Kakashi roared as he materialized in front of the stumps. We're acting like a team. Naruto shot back. Why yeah. Naruto convinced us that we have to work together if we're even going to stand a chance. Sakura gathered her courage and supported her team. Team 7 is 1. Sasuke said defiantly. Is that so? The Jonin took a step forward as he flashed through a series of hand seals. Then I guess I'll release the storm genjutsu and untie Sasuke since you all passed. Team 7 could only watch numbly as Kakashi untied Sasuke. I'll see you all here at 7 a. m. for training and missions. Bye. Sasuke left in a stunned silence and Sakura chased after the Uchiha. Naruto waited a few moments before jumping around and yelling. I passed. I'm a ninja. The third Hokage lit his pipe and allowed himself a moment to relax. He exhaled and smiled at his guest. I am still shocked that you passed a team, Kakashi. If I may be truthful, Hokage-sama, I was tempted to fail Team 7 and take Naruto as an apprentice. Kakashi confessed. I can understand your desire to protect and nurture Minato and Kashina's child, but Konoha needs you to train a full squad. Kakashi, you are one of our finest shinobi. Team 7 needs you. I believe you are the only hope for showing Sasuke the need for the will of fire. Hiruzen attempted to placate Kakashi. Obito would want me to help Sasuke. Kakashi admitted. Hokage-sama, you don't seem too concerned about the Haruno girl. I do not see as many dangers for the girl as I do for her teammates. Sakura is not a Jinchuriki and son of a close friend. She is also not the last hope to revive a powerful bloodline and ensure its loyalty to Konoha. Also, I believe she will be a fine Kunoichi once she grows out of her infatuation with Uchiha Sasuke. The Hokage confessed. Sakura has potential in Genjutsu and medical ninjutsu. She'll never be a frontline combatant like Naruto or Sasuke. My specialties mesh well with the boys. I have a few genjutsu and no medical ninjutsu. Kakashi was speaking more to himself than the Hokage. He was planning how to make Team 7 succeed. The Hokage tapped his pipe on the ashtray. I place complete confidence in you, Kakashi. Kakashi nodded and wished he felt the same way. It was 9.45 am when Kakashi arrived for Team 7's first official day. Naruto and Sakura loudly berated Kakashi for being late. The Jonin claimed that a herd of black cats and a gauntlet of ladders forced him to take the long way around Konoha. Naruto thought it was funny and Sakura spent five minutes berating him. Team 7 missed Kakashi's groan. The first day was spent demonstrating individual talents and Kakashi explaining how each individual's skill could complement their teammates. Sasuke and Naruto were disappointed when Kakashi announced there would be no mission today. Naruto watched as Sakura chased after Sasuke. He was disappointed, but lately Naruto had begun to doubt why he liked Sakura that way in the first place. Gah. That's the last thought I wanted to have before my checkup. Naruto loudly complained. It took only a few minutes to reach the clinic, but the wait was nearly unbearable. The doctor ran a number of checks on Naruto's eyes. Naruto was confused by some of the questions. The doctor asked if Naruto had noticed any change in his vision or felt his chakra alter in any way. Naruto told the doc that he was feeling much better thanks to the medicine. After a few more questions, Naruto was allowed to leave. The boy didn't know why he got a different doctor every time, but he accepted it. As he left, Naruto he wondered how the other teams did on their final tests. He hoped that Team 8 made it. Hanada was nice and deserved to succeed. Kiba was one of Naruto's semi-friends and Naruto wished him well even if they had started to butt heads recently. I'll track them down later. Now it's time for dinner and then bed, Naruto announced to the world. Once again, Kakashi was late. Naruto and Sakura berated him again. However, Naruto was beginning to wonder if this wasn't just another exercise. Kakashi-sensei wants us to work together. All of our training so far has been designed to at least get us on the same page. Maybe I should try talking to Sasuke and Sakura-chan while waiting. Great news. I think we're ready for our first mission. Kakashi announced. Naruto leapt in the air and whooped. Sakura squealed excitedly and even Sasuke grinned. The excitement was palpable. The disappointment was palpable. Team 7 would never consider collecting trash from one of the streams on the outskirts of Konoha mission. Kakashi was sitting on a tree branch reading while his genin collected trash. Hey, Kakashi sensei, Naruto called out. Yes, Naruto? The Jonin replied lazily. 
Can we keep the cans we collect? Naruto asked as he caught another piece of garbage and put it in the trash can strapped to his back. Want to turn it in for some extra money, eh? Kakashi chuckled. Naruto laughed back. Well, with as many cans as Team 7 has collected we could probably each buy weeks worth of groceries. Sasuke and Sakura exchanged a confused glance. How could Naruto sound excited about affording only a week's worth of groceries? Everyone knew the loud was an orphan, but they never knew he was that close to the poverty line. Kakashi couldn't decide whether to smile, frown or rage at Naruto's simple statement. The copy Nin wanted smiled that Naruto was putting the team front and center. He also wanted to frown because the son of the greatest man Kakashi had ever known deserved so much better. Kakashi raged at his own failure. I should have done more for him. Minato sensei, please forgive me. Team 7 passed the next few weeks training in team tactics and in stealth exercises. The D rank missions piled up as well. Naruto was grateful for the steady income. It was refreshing not having to budget every penny for food and bills. The young man had actually begun to save a bit of money. My money. One day I'll have enough to have a house and not just a flat. Unfortunately, the D rank missions were boring. Naruto and Sasuke both believed their growth as ninja was being stifled. The two rookie shinobi, while very different, both thrived on action and challenges. The weeks had transformed Team 7 into a functional ninja squad. They still weren't up to Kakashi's high, truthfully near impossible, standards. However, the masked Jonin had hopes that he and Naruto could eventually reach Sasuke and Sakura. Kakashi observed as Naruto tried to engage his teammates in conversation. Sasuke still remained emotionally distant and Sakura still had an undeserved distrust of Naruto's motives. Kakashi smiled broadly as he saw Sasuke smile at one of Naruto's theatrical retellings of how Tora, the cat of the fire daimyo's wife, attacked me like some crazed demon. I think with Naruto, this team will make it. Team 7 entered the Hokage's office and was greeted by Aruka. Kakashi reported the mission was successful in bored tones. It took every ounce of self-control not to laugh at Naruto and Sasuke's glee at seeing the fire daimyo's wife squeeze the life out of Tora. The Hokage's boredom was clear as he listed off the available D-rank missions. Old man Hokage. Naruto cut off the Hokage. We need a real mission. How are we supposed to grow as ninja if we're babysitting for some politician? Kakashi grinned at Naruto's reasoning and was proud to see Sasuke nodding in agreement. It wasn't due to friendship like Kakashi hoped, but it was a good first step. Aruka was loudly berating Naruto for interrupting the Hokage and not understanding why D-ranks were important. Kakashi. The Hokage spoke after allowing Aruka to finish. Do you believe Team 7 is ready for a C-rank mission? I believe they are ready, Hokage-sama. Hitaki Kakashi nodded in assent. Very well. Please send in Tazuna. The Hokage commanded politely. One of the Chunin guards exited the office. He returned a few minutes later with a tanned older man. The man wore a peaked straw hat and carried a large jug that was undoubtedly full of alcohol. These runts are all you can spare to protect me? Tazuna grumbled. Runts. The three members of Team 7 thought in annoyance. Kakashi. I smiled, and stepped forward. I assure you that my team is very capable. All of them show promise beyond their years. I am also a Jonin. That means any threats my students cannot handle, I will be able to dispatch. Though, we're only expecting bandits. Our biggest problem with bandits will be Naruto and Sasuke arguing over who dispatched more enemies. The Hokage narrowed his eyes when he saw a momentary flash of worry in Tazuna's eyes. Right. We'll be fine against bandits. The old man laughed as he took a gulp out of his jug. Naruto smiled broadly at the chance to prove how far he had advanced. Inwardly, he had a pang of worry. Why do I get the feeling we're going to regret working for this guy? Naruto laughed as he bolted ahead of Team 7 and Tazuna. He couldn't describe the emotions and simple freedom he was experiencing in that moment. Naruto finally felt like he was a true shinobi. The world suddenly seemed so much larger and more wondrous. Naruto knew he was taking another step towards his dream. Slow down, idiot. We need to stay together, Sakura snapped. Sorry, Sakura-chan. I'm just excited to finally get out of the village. Naruto spoke excitedly and motioned with his hands. Tizuna stared at the young ninja and worried about his competence. Sasuke did not show any outward reaction. Kakashi, however, was thankful his frown was hidden behind his mask. 
Get it out of your system now, Naruto, Kakashi said warmly. There's a long way to wave and we need to be ready for any bandits or highwaymen that may be along our route. Naruto was about to respond to Kakashi when he noticed the client flinch. The experience in the doctor's office before the bell test had shown Naruto the importance of being observant. Okay, Kakashi sensei. I'll talk to Kakashi sensei about that later, Naruto thought after a deep breath. Team 7 set off at a leisurely pace due to their civilian client. Sakura was trying to chat with the client after being ignored by Sasuke again. Naruto took the opportunity to slip back to Kakashi. You need something, Naruto? The Cyclopean Jonin asked. I think our client is hiding something, Naruto whispered to his Jonin instructor. Kakashi I smiled at Naruto. You've become more observant. Keep this up and I might forget you are a complete knucklehead, Kakashi said with a laugh. Naruto grumbled. Kakashi's stance shifted subtly and the Jonin became serious. Naruto, I need you to tell Sasuke to prepare for an attack. Sure thing. Kakashi sensei. Naruto didn't shout but he wasn't quiet. He rushed forward to where Sasuke was casually walking. Naruto was surprised to see that Sasuke actually looked like he was enjoying something. Oi, Sasuke. Naruto managed to keep his voice down. The Uchiha acknowledged Naruto with a grunt. Kakashi sensei says to be ready for an attack. The client's hiding something and we've got to be ready for anything. Understood, Sasuke replied. Naruto noticed a fire in Sasuke's eyes. Naruto had never seen Sasuke have such a reaction to anything before. The Uzumaki started to head back towards Kakashi when Sasuke put a hand on his shoulder. Get back to Kakashi. The puddle. Naruto was about to ask about what a puddle had to do with anything when he realized what Sasuke was talking about. There shouldn't be a puddle in the middle of the road. Good catch Sasuke, it hasn't rained in over a week, Naruto thought. Kakashi looked up at Naruto's approach. You need something Naruto? Yeah, hey, I got a pee, Naruto said while wringing his hands. Kakashi smiled as he noticed that Naruto was pointing to the puddle and followed that signal with the hand seal for the shadow clone jutsu. Make it quick, Naruto, Kakashi groaned theatrically. Naruto rushed off into the woods and made a few clones before returning to Team 7. Sakura rolled her eyes at Naruto's theatrical reappearance. Naruto noticed that Sasuke had opened his shuriken holster. The last Uchiha actually nodded at Naruto. Kakashi had been whistling and suddenly shifted his tune. If that wasn't a signal, I'll give up ramen, Naruto thought to himself. It took a second for Naruto to comprehend what happened next. A pair of ninja erupted from the puddle and ensnared Kakashi in a long, barbed chain. Kakashi was shredded in an instant. Sakura screamed in terror. Naruto believed Kakashi to be dead for a heartbeat. Then, he remembered that Team 7 knew an attack had been imminent. Kakashi had to be alive. Naruto took comfort from that fact and threw a pair of kanai. His aim was off, but the kanai did strike their marks. The kanai Naruto threw from his left hand grazed the left ninja on the shoulder. The right kanai miraculously cut an equipment pouch from the enemy ninja. Duck, idiot! Sasuke screamed. Naruto didn't need to be reminded twice. He rolled forward to dodge the shuriken Sasuke threw. Naruto marveled at Sasuke's accuracy. Naruto may have considered Sasuke insufferably stuck up, but Naruto would never doubt his abilities. The shuriken pinned the chain connecting the two ninja together. One of the ninja took a swipe at Naruto as the genin rose to his feet. The strike tore at Naruto's equipment pack. Sasuke launched an attack against the closest enemy, but his kick was blocked. I have to do more. Naruto shouted in his mind and drew a handful of shuriken. He threw them just as the enemies detached themselves free from the chain embedded in the tree. Naruto and Sasuke both expected the ninja to attack them. Instead, Tazuna was the target. Sakura positioned herself between the onrushing ninja. Sakura-chan. Naruto called out. The attack that would have overwhelmed Sakura never connected. Kakashi practically materialized in front of Sakura and Tazuna. The Jonin clothes lined the two ninja and incapacitated them easily. Yo! Kakashi blithely greeted. We thought you were dead, Tazuna said with a gulp. Kakashi tightened his hold on his two enemies. Nope, perfectly fine, Kakashi assured the client. A substitution. Sakura exclaimed after she realized what had happened. Yep. Kakashi congratulated Sakura on her observation. I had to confirm two things. 
First, I wanted to see how my team would react to an attack. Second, I wanted to discover the target of these two. Tazuna gulped and Team 7 looked at Kakashi expectantly. I was proud of all of you. Kakashi praised his students. He turned his attention to Tazuna. We were attacked by the Demon Brothers. They are Chunin level missing Nin from the Hidden Mist. The presence of Ninja automatically makes this a B rank instead of a C rank. Naruto saw your reaction earlier to my statement about only facing bandits. You intentionally lied about the rank. We're returning to Konoha. Wait. Please listen, Tazuna pleaded with the Konoha shinobi. You put my students in danger. I pray for your sake you have a good reason, Kakashi said darkly. Tazuna quailed under the gaze of Kakashi and Sasuke. He took a deep breath before launching into an explanation of how the land of waves was incredibly poor. Tazuna also revealed that the shipping magnate Gato had taken control of the country through violence and economic coercion. The bridge Tazuna was building was the last hope for Wave. Naruto couldn't help but roll his eyes at Tazuna's melodramatic declaration that if Team 7 didn't protect him, Tazuna's family would grow to hate Konoha. Well, it's up to my team, Kakashi said noncommittally. I saw we go on, Naruto spoke with determination. I have faith in our team. HN. I agree with Naruto, Sasuke said to everyone's surprise. If, Sasuke kun says to go on, I say we go on, Sakura added her opinion. Looks like my students have decided, Kakashi said with strange and likely forced enthusiasm. He was still restraining the Demon Brothers in a chokehold. I'll just tie these guys up and we'll be on our way. Tazuna felt a nervous trickle of sweat run down his temple. The shinobi pretended not to notice and continued on the journey to wave. Team 7's journey was uneventful as they entered wave proper. Naruto was in awe of Tazuna's bridge. It wasn't complete, but the scale impressed Naruto. Tazuna listened patiently as Naruto, loudly, complimented his skill. The boat's driver berated Naruto for his outburst. Gato's thugs were known to patrol the approaches to wave. This is as far as I can take you, the bosun said apologetically. Team 7 and Tazuna disembarked into a practical ghost town. The few citizens who were out and about quickly ducked into the nearest building. Everyone is so afraid. Sakura whispered sympathetically. Gato has reduced us to this, the bridge builder growled. Naruto and Sasuke exchanged glances when they noticed Tazuna wring the neck of his bottle as if imagining the glass container was actually Gato. How far are we from your home, Tazuna san? Kakashi asked. Two miles. I'm sure my daughter will have a meal waiting for all of us, Tazuna promised. The least he could do for the ninja was offer them a meal. They had already saved him from the Demon Brothers and appeared to be sympathetic to Wave's plight. All right, Kakashi said approvingly. Team 7, do not lower your guard. Team 7 and their client were both very eager to complete the first leg of their journey. Kakashi reminded his students to keep an eye out for possible ambushes. Naruto seemed to be overzealous in his execution of Kakashi's orders. After three quarters of a mile, Naruto appeared to randomly throw a kanai into a bush. Instead of a scream of pain, a terrified white rabbit dashed from the bush. Naruto. How could you scare such an adorable creature half to death? Sakura berated her hyperactive teammate. That rabbit is white. It is a domesticated animal. If it were wild, its coat would be brown, Kakashi thought quickly. Everyone down. Kakashi ordered. Naruto and Sakura hit the deck immediately. Sasuke was a half second behind his teammates as he dragged the client down with him. Team 7 was nearly cut in half by an absolutely massive sword. The sword embedded itself in a nearby tree. A ninja landed on the hilt of the massive sword. His back was turned to the Konoha ninja in a show of defiance. Well, if it isn't Zabuza the demon of the hidden mist, Kakashi said in a bored tone. I'm flattered that I'm recognized by copy ninja Kakashi, Zabuza responded. I want all of you to form up and protect Tazuna, Kakashi addressed his genin team. Zabuza is on a completely different level. Kakashi looked up at Zabuza. It was clear, even to Naruto, that both Kakashi and Zabuza were grimacing under their masks. Kakashi removed his Hitai 8 and Zabuza actually laughed. I'm honored. We haven't even traded a single blow and I have seen the legendary Sharingan, Zabuza boasted. Naruto heard Sasuke whisper, Sharingan, Zabuza grinned and flashed through a series of hand seals. A thick and unnatural mist rolled over the clearing. 
Team 7 froze in place when Zabaza's raw and unrestrained killing intent assaulted their very soul. The killing intent greatly affected all the Genin and Tazuna. The old bridge builder actually vomited. Sakura began to shake uncontrollably when Zabuza began listing off the veins and other body parts that would lead to the quickest deaths. Kakashi's quiet assurance that he would not allow his comrades to die shored up Team 7's resolve and they were able to withstand their instinctual terror. Then the battle truly began. Naruto had trouble following the fight. Kakashi and Zabuza were at a level Naruto could barely comprehend. In that moment, Naruto realized just how far he had to go before he could claim the title of Hokage. I have a lot of work to do. Today I realize how much I have to do, Naruto thought in amazement. One of the few details he could track was that Kakashi seemed to be a second or two ahead of Zabuza. Is that the power of the Sharingan? Naruto asked himself. He cast a quick glance to his teammates. Sakura was watching the battle in complete awe. Her earlier mortal terror had seemingly been replaced by a sense of unnatural wonder. Sasuke was emotionally waffling between the same sense of awe Sakura felt and anger. It was difficult to hear over the clashing of steel, battle cries, and powerful jutsus, but Naruto swore he heard Sasuke mutter, Kakashi isn't one of us. How? Naruto noticed that Tazuna had dropped his bottle of booze. The Jinchuriki refocused his attention on the battle unfolding before him. Kakashi and Zabuza had taken their battle to surface of a nearby lake. Team 7 listened as Kakashi claimed he could see the future. Kakashi declared that Zabuza's future was death. Naruto noticed that Sasuke was far more focused on Kakashi's Sharingan than the actual battle. I'll have to ask Sasuke for some details on the Sharingan. That thing must be awesome, Naruto thought. Kakashi and Zabuza attacking each other with a powerful Sweden technique cut off all further thoughts on the Sharingan. The attack knocked Zabuza onto dry ground. The demon of the mist impacted against a tree with an audible crack. You got him Kakashi sensei. Naruto shouted in congratulations. Sakura yelled in exhilaration. Sasuke didn't yell like his teammates, but was wearing the biggest smile Naruto had ever seen on the last Uchiha's face. Kakashi, I smiled, at his students. The Jonin's gaze hardened when he turned his attention to Zabuza. I told you that your future was death. Kakashi said harshly. Go to hell, Sharingan Kakashi, Zabuza spat out the words like they were poison. You should have chosen better last words, the copy ninja said glibly as he drew a kanai. Kakashi was robbed of his kill when half a dozen senbon pierced Zabuza's neck. The demon of the hidden mist collapsed. A masked Kirigakure hunter Nin landed a few feet from Kakashi and Zabuza. Team 7 was immediately back on guard. I must thank you for defeating Zabuza. I have been tracking him for some time, the hunter Nin commented in silky tones. Kakashi cautiously approached Zabuza's body and felt for a pulse. You seem to have taken care of him easily enough, Kakashi said smoothly. Naruto stared at the hunter Nin. He's our age. How can someone our age take out a powerful ninja like Zabuza so easily? Naruto, there is something you have to understand. In this world, there are ninja stronger than me, but younger than you. Kakashi explained gently. I knew I would have to work hard, but I never knew it would be like this, Naruto said in a small voice. This is not an easy life, Konoha kun, the hunter Nin said sympathetically. Again, I thank you for your assistance. I must preserve the secrecy of Kirigakure's methods of disposing of criminals. Kakashi nodded and started to speak, but suddenly swayed. The hunter Nin leapt away carrying Zabuza's body an enormous sword as Kakashi collapsed. Team 7 and Tazuna rushed over to the collapsed Jonin. Sakura reached Kakashi first and immediately checked for injuries. She followed the standard procedures the academy taught. Sakura swallowed back a sigh of relief when she saw no overt injuries. I can't relax yet, Sakura reprimanded herself. She checked Kakashi's pulse and breathing. The copy Nin's breathing wasn't labored and his pulse was strong. Kakashi is just exhausted from his battle, Sakura reported to her teammates and her client. We should get your sensei to my house. He can rest there, Tazuna suggested. Team 7 nodded in agreement. Naruto made several shadow clones and had them fan out to keep an eye out for any potential ambushes. Better safe than sorry, Naruto said sheepishly. You actually did something smart. I'm almost impressed, Sasuke said with a shrug. I think that's the closest I've ever heard you come to complimenting something, Naruto said in awe. 
Sasuke only grunted as he helped Naruto carry Kakashi to Tazuna's home. Naruto still had trouble believing how crazy this, simple, C rank had become, but he had hope. He knew that when Kakashi woke up, there wouldn't be anything that could stop Team 7. Kakashi's words about the existence of younger ninja stronger than Kakashi still weighed heavily on Naruto. I'll just have to work harder. I'll never give up on my dreams, Naruto assured himself with a confident smile. Naruto was throwing clothes, equipment, and even dried rations out of his bag like they were covered in maggots. Every few moments, Naruto would grab an item, usually clothes or rations, and shake them. The strange, yet undeniably frantic, search was occasionally observed by the other members of Team 7, Tazuna, and the bridge builder's daughter. Sasuke was the latest witness to Naruto's strange search and eventually walked over to his panicked teammate. What the heck are you doing? I can't find my medicine. If I don't take it, my eyes will flip out and make me useless. Naruto spoke in a rush. The orange-clad shinobi dug into a pocket and pulled out nothing. Naruto frowned. I'll help you look. If you are out of commission, we'll be in even worse shape than we are now, Sasuke offered to Naruto. Thanks. A bit of the edge in Naruto's voice leaked away. The two boys looked for a while longer. Sasuke picked up Naruto's bag, and his grimace grew darker. Naruto, did you put the medicine in one of the pouches? Sasuke asked. I did. Naruto felt his heart fall to his stomach. Sasuke tossed the bag to Naruto. The Uzumaki caught his pack and forlornly ran his hand along the deep gouge in the side of the pack. How is this going to affect the team? I remember how bad it hurt when I was little. I passed out in one of the training grounds, I think. We can't afford to have you pass out on us. You did pretty well against the Demon Brothers. If we're going to survive Gato's next attempt to kill Tizuna, you'll have to be able to at least keep up with me. Sasuke almost complimented Naruto. I'll do more than keep up with you. I'll leave you in the dust. Naruto shot up from his chair and smiled broadly. It was clearly a challenge. Sasuke, in spite of himself, smiled back. We'll see about that, Dobi, Sasuke responded to the challenge. Your sparring match will have to wait. Sakura suddenly appeared at the top of the stairs. Kakashi sensei has woken up and wants to talk with us. Naruto and Sasuke followed Sakura to the room where Kakashi was resting. Sakura threw a glance over her shoulder and rolled her eyes. The boys were failing in their attempt to hide their race up the stairs. They look ridiculous. Wait, is that how Eno Pig and I look? If that's, no wonder Sasuke kun hasn't noticed me, Sakura lamented. Team 7 slipped through the door and sat down in front of their sensei. So, who won the race up the stairs? Kakashi asked. I did. Naruto and Sasuke declared at the same time. Naruto practically shouted. Sasuke, for his part, made his declaration in an even tone. Next time, I suggest getting Sakura to judge your contests, Kakashi I smiled. Oh, before I forget, Zabuza's still alive. What? Naruto yelled in surprise. That hunter nin killed him. Actually, it was a very good hoax. Senbon are terrible weapons for killing targets, unless they were poisoned. I doubt the Senbon were poisoned. I would have noticed when I checked Zabuza's pulse, Kakashi explained. Sensei, you did check Zabuza's pulse. You said he was dead. Sakura managed, admirably in Kakashi's opinion, to keep the panic out of her voice as best she could. Senbon may not be good for killing, but they are excellent for hitting pressure points. The false hunter Nin definitely put Zabuza in a near-death state. He also moved fast enough to keep me from performing a more thorough exam, Kakashi groaned as he sat up. Please, sensei, don't strain yourself, Sakura whispered. Kakashi sighed and laid back down. Kakashi, the hunter nin said he took the body to safeguard Mist's body disposal techniques, Sasuke spoke. That, on the surface at least, appears to be a reasonable course of action. Maybe, if the Mist used special techniques, Standard Kirigakure techniques basically boil down to cutting off the head and burning the bodies. I can understand if our friend wanted to keep one of his fire release techniques hidden, but there's no reason to hide beheading a corpse, the copy Nin countered. Team 7 fell silent. The first sound was Naruto groaning. I can't believe we got played like that. We may have been played, but we do have an advantage. Zabuza's return won't catch us by surprise. I will be able to move tomorrow. In the morning, I'll start you on some training. Given Zabuza's condition after the battle, 
plus the fake Senbon. I'd say we have a week to prepare, the Jonin further explained. Now, go downstairs, get some food and some rest. The next morning Team 7 followed Kakashi to a wooded clearing near Tazuna's home. Kakashi had borrowed a crush from Tsunami, Tazuna's daughter, to help the copy ninja teach his students. How are your eyes, Naruto? Sasuke asked. Good right now, Naruto answered. After a few moments of travel, the ninja came to a stop. All right, we'll be training here. The exercise I'm showing you is how to climb trees, Kakashi explained. Climbing trees, Naruto deadpanned. How will something I do for fun help us? Because you'll be doing it without your hands, Kakashi explained as he walked towards the tree, and kept walking. Team 7's jaws dropped as Kakashi walked halfway up the tree and back down. Well, any pithy remarks? Nothing from me, Sensei, Sakura said in awe. So, how does this work? Sasuke asked. Well, I'm glad someone got to the point. It's really simple, in theory. All you have to do is find the right balance of chakra to channel to your feet. Too little and you'll slip off. Too much and you'll rock it off, Kakashi pointed out to his students. But, that last one would be awesome, Naruto said excitedly. You could totally combine walking up to the ceiling and then launching a kick-ass ambush by flying at the enemy at super speed. Ah, but to do that, you'll have to master finding the right level of chakra. So, you'll have to work on the basics first, Kakashi pointed out. Any other questions, or enthusiastic observations? Oh. Kakashi Sensei. Kakashi Sensei. Naruto shouted and raised his hand. Yes, Naruto? Kakashi answered in a very amused tone of voice. Old man Hokage told me that my shadow clones give me their memories when they dispel. Will that help me in this exercise? Naruto asked. Absolutely. I wouldn't dispel too many at once though, you might get a headache, Kakashi warned. Whatever. Let's get started, Naruto shouted. Multi shadow clone jutsu. Now, take these kanai to mark your progress. I'm going back to Tazuna's home to rest. Good luck and stay alert, Kakashi said as he left his students to their own devices. Naruto grinned broadly as dozens of shadow clones appeared. Sakura was amazed at her teammates' abilities, but she felt doubt worm its way into the back of her mind. Naruto, that's so amazing. I didn't know how easily you could this, Sakura thought as she took in all the Naruto clones standing about. Her gaze eventually settled on Sasuke. And Sasuke-kun is brilliant. What do I offer this team? I don't want to hold them back. I don't want to fall behind. Just how many did you create? Sasuke asked in surprise. Dunno. Thirty-something I think. Naruto said with a casual shrug. Sasuke shook his head in amusement and turned to the tree. He was further surprised to see Sakura already charging the tree. Sakura? Sasuke didn't realize he had even spoken. Well, come on you too. Zabuza and his partner aren't going to give us a chance to guess how many clones Naruto can make. Kakashi paused mid push up and grinned at his student. I'm impressed, Sakura. You beat Sasuke, a genius, and Naruto, a complete knucklehead with an unfair advantage, to the top. Thank you, Sensei, Sakura bowed. Since you are so vastly superior to your teammates, I want you to accompany Tazuna to the bridge today. Keep an eye out for Gado's thugs, Kakashi ordered as he resumed his push ups. Yes, Kakashi sensei, Sakura responded. Oh, and before I forget, tell your two teammates not to overdo it too badly, Kakashi chuckled. Sakura smiled as she bowed. She headed downstairs where Sasuke and Naruto were preparing for another attempt at climbing the trees. Naruto was nursing a serious headache from clone overload. Don't give me that look, Dobi. Kakashi warned you about dispelling that many clones, Sasuke preemptively told Naruto not to blame him for his headache. Sasuke-kun, Naruto, Sakura said calmly. The two boys turned their attention away from their discussion. Kakashi-sensei hasn't fully recovered. He wants you two to continue working on tree walking. Well yeah, Sasuke's nowhere near done, Naruto said offhandedly. You're not any closer. Sasuke shot back. I'm closer than you are. Naruto countered. Sakura cleared her throat. I need to go. Kakashi wants me to guard Tazuna and his workers today. We still have a few days before Zabuza will return. I can handle thugs. Sasuke and Naruto looked at Sakura like she had grown a second head. Duh, you're a ninja. Thugs can't step to us, Naruto said excitedly. 
Sasuke shrugged, but that was as close to a compliment or even agreement as Sakura was likely to get. If they do attack, I want to hear stories about how much ass you kicked, Sakura chan. Naruto added excitedly. Thanks, Naruto, Sakura said with a legitimate smile. Good luck you two with your training. Sakura left Tazuna's home with the bridge builder. Naruto took a deep breath. So, we've been surpassed by Sakura chan, Naruto said offhandedly. Don't bring it up, Naruto, Sasuke growled as he got up from his seat. Naruto got up from his seat as well. Race you to the trees? Naruto asked. Sasuke made a dismissive grunt. Race implies you have a shot at winning. It is on. Naruto snapped. The two boys took off running and willfully ignored Tsunami's shouts. Sakura could hear the whispers. She could hear Tazuna's workers questioning if she could protect them, questioning if she could protect herself. It was as if her self doubts had manifested in physical form. They are just scared, Tazuna said in his most grandfatherly tone. Sakura sighed and looked at her client. To tell the truth, so am I. But you kept going, Tazuna pointed out. You could have turned back after the Demon Brothers, but here you are. You were scared and kept going. That is bravery. It reminds me of Kaiza. Kaiza? Sakura asked. She hadn't heard that name mentioned. However, she could tell by the downcast looks of Tazuna and the workers it was undoubtedly a tragic story. I, a fine man, healed the hole in my daughter's heart and would have filled the father shaped void in Inari's soul, Tazuna began. He told the tale of Kaiza. He told of how Gato had the brave man brutally tortured and murdered in an attempt to break the spirit of Wave. The day Kaiza died, a bit of all of us died with him. Tazuna, we've got trouble. One of the workers shouted out in fear. A heavy set thug carrying a large sickle sauntered forward. Trouble's a bit of an understatement. Sakura immediately knew this man was a killer. Her enemy, and he was an enemy, had killed before and would kill again. Sakura fought to keep her fear under control. There were three T3 three workers and her client depending on her. Sakura was duty bound to defend Tazuna. Beyond that, Sakura would protect the workers as well. There was no way Sakura would allow nearly two score innocent people to be murdered on her watch. I am a shinobi. This is the life I chose, Sakura declared to herself. She silently cursed that her own thoughts held a twinge of fear. The thug just laughed as he rolled his weapon around in the palm of his hand. I, I won't let you harm Tazuna san or his workers. D depart immediately. The thug broke out into hysterics. Look at the little princess pretending to be a soldier. You're a little young. So I guess I'll kill you too. I wonder who you'll scream for first. Your mama or your papa? Let's find out. Sakura cursed her tremble and flashed through some hand seals. There were some puffs of smoke and three bunshin appeared between the thug and Tazuna's workers. Well, aren't we a little witch? The thug taunted. Sakura desperately tried to ignore the taunting. She was desperately praying that her next attempt would work. Sakura began a second series of hand seals. She had been studying at the Shinobi Library for at least an hour every night since she received her Hitai 8. Unfortunately, her studies had not yielded much fruit. So far, Sakura had barely nailed down the basics of the simplest genjutsu she had discovered. There was absolutely no way her meager skills would work against a shinobi. Sakura prayed her genjutsu would work on a cocky thug. The thug was evidently tired of waiting and charged right as Sakura finished weaving her genjutsu. The genjutsu was a simple one. It merely interfered with the target's perception of distances. Please work, please work, please work, Sakura chanted over and over in her mind. Sakura was struck by a vicious swing of the criminal's sickle. Sakura, however, did not scream or bleed. Instead, she phased out of existence. The criminal enforcer had hit one of the bunchens. He had been fooled. As the larger man screamed out in frustration, the real Sakura made her move. She threw a brace of shuriken at the man. Of course, Sakura positioned herself so her shuriken had no chance of hitting Tazuna or any of his workers. The first few shuriken missed, but two hit the target. It is a target. It isn't a person. I can't think of him as a person, Sakura reminded herself to calm her nerves. The man cried out in pain. It was a second opening for Sakura to exploit. She pulled a kanai and charged. The man wheeled around and swung his large sickle at Sakura. Thankfully, Sakura's genjutsu was still in play. The strike missed wide right. Sakura stabbed out with the kanai, but the man managed to dodge. 
Sakura only managed to slash the man's hip. Unfortunately, the cut wasn't very deep. Sakura's charge also put her close enough to her foe that the genjutsu's effects were negated. The man kicked Sakura hard in the gut. Sakura was knocked from her feet and skidded to a stop. I don't know what witchery you pulled, but I know that it goes away if I get close. I'm going to gut you like a fish, you little. Sakura scrambled to her feet and rewove her genjutsu. She reinforced the first genjutsu and added a second layer. Sakura was praying the entire time that her ploy would work. The thug was quickly closing the distance. He cursed Sakura, her mother, and any other familial relations he could think of as he advanced. Sakura fumbled through her supply pouch and grabbed her only explosive tag. The kunoichi quickly attached it to one of her kanai. Sakura reared back and threw the kanai with all her might. She barely hit her mark. The kanai hit the outside of the man's. There was no scream or terrified flash of recognition from the criminal. Instead, there was a fireball. Sakura had killed for the first time. The workers cheered Sakura's victory. They celebrated a blow against Gato's tyranny of fear. Sakura heard one of the workers praise Sakura's strength. She wanted to cry. I'm not strong. Not like Sasuke and Naruto, I'm not strong. Naruto chuckled as he brushed himself off. I've got an idea Sasuke. A miracle. Sasuke deadpanned as he got up after another attempt to reach the top of his tree. Using all these shadow clones gave me the plan. You know how they can act independently and stuff. Naruto rambled. Obviously, I've been forced to deal with them for three days. You do realize six have challenged me to fights, Sasuke pointed out. Take it as a compliment. They want to get stronger and what better way than sparring with you? Naruto pointed out impatiently. Anyway, the idea is, buddy clones. Buddy clones, Sasuke repeated. What the heck are you talking about? Well, you know the situation with the Demon Brothers earlier. What if there had been more bad guys and they had held up Sakura Chan in a fight? What would have happened to the client? Naruto pointed out. Sasuke grit his teeth. He knew what would have happened. Tazuna would have died. The thought was sobering for Sasuke. He could have failed his first true mission. Itachi had been in Anbu at this age. I am so far behind, Sasuke lamented. He would have died, Sasuke admitted hotly. Not if we had buddy clones, Naruto stated proudly. See, before any possible battle or touchy situation, I'll make a number of clones. The clones will sit back, and if we get into trouble, poof, they'll substitute with us. Sasuke thought about it for a moment. Not a bad plan. You might be able to carry your weight after all. Naruto wiped a mock tear from his eye. You really do care. We might fool people into thinking we're a team after all. Maybe even friends. Call it whatever you want. Sasuke didn't quite snap. I'm spent. I'm going back to Tazuna's house. I'll let Kakashi know you're going to stay out here. Thanks, Sasuke. I shouldn't be too much longer, Naruto assured his teammate. Sasuke shrugged his shoulders and headed back to the client's home. He was thinking about his team. They weren't the disappointments he had expected them to be. He still wasn't where he wanted to be, but Sasuke believed he was at least moving forward. Good evening, Sasuke-san, Tsunami greeted. How was your training? Productive, Sasuke responded neutrally. Thank you. Tsunami didn't respond to the forced formality. She simply informed Sasuke when she would have dinner ready. Sasuke nodded in response and trudged upstairs to where Kakashi was doing some light exercises. Kakashi, Sasuke said in way of greeting. Naruto's being stubborn and won't come in until he gets the exercise done. How many clones did he have when you left? Kakashi's amusement was evident. Not entirely sure. The number was constantly in flux. Last count, 26, Sasuke reported. Oh, when we're at dinner, ask Sakura how her day went, Kakashi said cryptically. Sasuke nodded and headed downstairs to rest. Half an hour later, Tsunami called them all to dinner. Conversation was light for the most part. Sakura, did you encounter any enemies while escorting Tazuna? Sasuke asked. Yes, Sakura answered quietly. Were you victorious? Sasuke asked with genuine curiosity. I won, Sakura answered and looked up. Congratulations, Sasuke replied with a smirk. Sakura had always wanted Sasuke to compliment her skills and recognize her as a kunoichi. However, his congratulations rang hollow. All she could think of was her enemy dying in fire. Naruto dispelled his last clone. 
He fell backwards and lounged in the grass. The boy was exhausted, but had finally reached the top of the tree. I can't believe I pulled that off. I bet my chakra control is better than anyone's now, Naruto shouted. The shout of triumph became a shriek of pain. Naruto's hands immediately went to his eyes. He had hoped that this wouldn't happen. At least, he hoped he would make it back to Konoha before the pain hit. He started to cry, but the tears were too thick to be normal. Naruto was in too much pain to register the metallic smell. He was crying blood. The pain became so intense that Naruto actually passed out. His mind was not idle while his body was racked with pain. Naruto's mind registered a malevolent presence within the recesses of his soul. It had to be the Kyubi. Naruto's spirit felt the biju calling him to the seal. It was calling for release. Naruto fought against the siren call. He would not submit. He was Uzumaki Naruto and he would forge his own destiny. He would never give up. Haku hummed to herself as she entered a clearing. Zabuza Sama was healing very well. The young woman knelt and collected a rare herb. This will do nicely, Haku whispered. As her gaze rose from her collection, she noticed a young man in the center of the clearing. The false hunter Nin cautiously approached the brightly garbed boy. You, Haku breathed as she recognized the boy. It was the Konoha shinobi who had realized the struggles the shinobi world required. He did not register her presence. Haku was surprised until she noticed how labored the boy's breaths were. Is this, Naruto dying? Haku wondered. She knelt next to the boy and examined him. There were no outward signs of violence. Haku also did not see any signs of any allergic reactions or illness. The last Hayaton wielder took Naruto's hand and felt for a pulse. It was surprisingly strong. What is going on? Haku whispered to herself. She nearly panicked when Naruto's eyes fluttered open. However, Naruto did not seem to be aware of his surroundings. There was something off about Naruto's eyes. Haku remembered that the boy's eyes were an inviting blue. This time, however, they were an odd purple color with a shifting black double helix design. Haku's eyes went wide as she lost control of her bloodline and her arm froze up to the elbow. The double helix in Naruto's eyes stopped moving and the reformed into a pupil. As Haku banished the ice encasing her arm, Naruto's eye color returned to normal. Naruto began to stir and his eyes snapped to attention. Haku discreetly placed her hand on a clutch of Senbon hidden in her obi. It seems you will live after all. Who are you, Shinobi-san? She desperately wanted to add, What are your eyes? Uzumaki Naruto, you are a mystery, a mystery I will uncover. Naruto woke up gasping. He wasn't hurting anymore, but he could remember the pain. Strangely, he also had a vague memory of freezing. Naruto chalked that memory up to hallucinating due to the pain, and promptly ignored it. Thank goodness. I was growing worried that you would never wake up. A feminine voice drifted into Naruto's ears. W what happened? Naruto asked groggily. The shinobi blinked away what he thought was sleep, but was uncomfortably thick. I am not sure, shinobi-kun, Haku admitted. You seem to be in a great deal of pain. How are you feeling now? Better, Naruto answered. I'm Uzumaki Naruto, by the way. I am Haku, the feminine stranger returned the greeting. So, What's a pretty girl like you doing out in the woods? Hiding from Gato's thugs? Naruto asked with a grin. You could say that, Haku said neutrally. I am actually collecting herbs. Someone precious to me was recently injured. Naruto frowned. Gato's caused a lot of problems for Wave. It will be better when old man Tazuna finishes his bridge. Once we help run Gato out, you'll never have to worry about your friend being hurt again. Yes, Haku continued to weigh her words carefully. One way or another this will all be over soon. I promise that I will do my best for the people of Wave. Naruto happily declared as he jumped to his feet. I was afraid you would say that, Haku lamented. You are very determined. What do you fight for? Fight for? Naruto asked to buy himself a bit of time to think. Well, I want to become respected so that I can become Hokage. I believe that if you fight for those who are precious to you that you will find true strength. Your love, emotions, and connections will allow you to achieve great things, Haku declared. Naruto shook his head and grinned broadly. Talk about throwing out the shinobi handbook. I've never heard of any of the villages promoting an idea like that. I wouldn't know, Haku admitted honestly. She truly hadn't been connected to any of the shinobi villages. Perhaps it should be a new way of thinking. 
The Konoha shinobi flashed a smile that brought some rare heat to the ice release wielder's cheeks. I like that idea. Maybe when I'm Hokage, I'll encourage that way of thinking. You certainly have ambitious dreams, Haku said with a gentle smile. What's the point of dreams if you aren't going to dream big? Naruto asked with a smile. He looked up and noticed the position of the sun, oh crap. It's tomorrow. That wasn't just a nap. My friends and sensei are going to chew and spit me out like undercooked ramen noodles. Haku chuckled at Naruto's reaction. Perhaps you should head back. I should get these herbs back to my friend as well. After my team saves wave, I'll see you around. Naruto waved as he walked out of the clearing. Haku nodded and admirably hid her worry. Yes. I'm sure we'll see each other again. Naruto smiled broadly at Haku's promise as he made his way through the forest. A sudden grunt made Naruto look up. He grinned broadly as Sasuke approached. We were starting to get worried. Sasuke pointed out as he matched Naruto's stride and direction. Naruto beamed. Things were definitely looking up. Sorry, Naruto apologized. I got caught up in training. Managed to get to the top of the tree and I spent some time with a pretty local girl. I think she might like me. Was she blind? Sasuke took a dig at his friend. Oi, you asshole. Momochi Zabuza grimaced behind his bandages. He was recovering from the conflict with Hitaki Kakashi. The Kirigakure missing Nin was grateful for Haku's intervention and her continued healing. She was performing her role as a tool adequately. Zabuza just wondered where the hell she was at. The ice release heiress had left to collect medicinal herbs and was gone far longer than expected. There would likely be words exchanged once his agent returned. In the distance, the demon of the hidden mist heard the infuriating voice of his employer. Gato ordering his pathetic mercenaries to prepare to intimidate the shinobi. Arrogant little shits. I'm bedridden and nearly out of chakra and I could kill every one of those punks, Momochi thought viciously as he gripped a kanai that he had hidden inside his bed frame. Well, 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 Gato began theatrically. The mighty demon has been laid low. How are you going to impose your will over Kirigakure if you can't handle a group of children and one man? Zabuza sat up and hid his fatigue and weakened condition. He growled and released some killing intent. The mercenaries quaked at the display and backed up. You know nothing of Shinobi. That one man was Hitaki Kakashi. I was fighting the next Hokage of the Hidden Leaf. I am the only person in this country who can stand against a cage. Do you have faith in your hired trash to defeat a Shinobi with over a thousand jutsu and an equal number of kills? You are part of that hired trash. Gato spat. Maybe I should teach you a lesson. The two mercenary swordsmen masquerading as samurai flourished their swords. Zabuza, a true master of Kenjutsu scoffed at the unnecessary display. Those incompetents were so slow, the former seven swordsmen had identified 39 openings in the time they had taken a single step forward. It would have been trivial to kill the men even in his current state. Fortunately, Gato's thugs were intercepted by an individual with a sense of mercy. I will not allow you to interfere with Zabuza-sama's recovery. The two mean screamed in pain and indignation. Haku released her grip and moved to her master's side. Zabuza was pleased to notice that she was not in her civilian-style clothing. She looked like a shinobi worthy of being his instrument. It also helped that no one would connect the fierce warrior standing next to the demon with the beautiful girl occasionally seen around Wave. TCH, Gato spat. You'd better not fail again, against this supposed, cage, he left in a hurry. As the crime boss and his cronies fled, Zabuza eased the killing intense pressure. You are late, Haku, Zabuza said harshly. Forgive my tardiness, master, Haku replied submissively. She began her healing work and Zabuza relaxed under her ministrations. The herbs were hard to find, and I encountered one of the Konoha shinobi. Which one? Haku blushed. Zabuza was not amused by this turn of events. He could afford no weakening of the chains that bound Haku to his service. The blonde-haired boy, Uzumaki Naruto. It is a shame we are on opposite sides. After I kill Kakashi and Tizuna, dot you will die Uzumaki Naruto, Zabuza declared to himself in the unfeeling void that awaited all the demon of the mist's enemies. Kakashi was glad to be moving easily again. The sluggishness from his overuse of the Sharingan had lessened greatly. He couldn't take a fully recovered Zabuza in his current state, but Kakashi was confident that Zabuza was in roughly the same boat as the copy Nin his students had a few more days to prepare. 
Luckily for Kakashi, he had some very dedicated shinobi. Even better, the former Anbu thought, was their teamwork. That, that felt weird, Sakura grumbled. Sasuke grunted. It may not be perfect, but this could save our lives one day. I I know, but I just wasn't ready for the, tug, I guess is what you'd call it. Sakura looked at the Naruto shadow clone standing in her old spot. Don't worry, I think that'll go away eventually. Naruto sheepishly rubbed the back of his head. I mean, I've only practiced on myself so far. The tug wouldn't really be noticeable for you, Naruto. You are technically substituting with your own chakra. Your body accepts the feeling without issues, because it is already used to the chakra feel, Sakura explained. Wait. Sasuke held up a hand. The tug might actually help us. If we get used to the nature of Naruto's chakra, it will act as a signal. If someone tries to mimic our tactic, I doubt they can replicate the feel of Naruto's chakra. Sakura's eyes went wide. I hadn't thought of that. Don't feel bad, Sakura, Kakashi said as he joined his genin. There are very few who would. I'm impressed by all of you. Tazuna is about to join his workers at the bridge. Sasuke, you haven't had a turn guarding the bridge yet. I want you to go and keep our client safe from any of Gato's thugs. Sasuke was visibly excited at the prospect of combat. If there was a large enough number of thugs and mercenaries, there was a strong chance Sasuke could awaken his Sharingan. What if I encounter Zabuza or that fake? Take one of the Shadow Clones with you. Naruto's clone is to substitute with you in the event Zabuza arrives. Retreat here with Tazuna and rally. I have a pair of explosive tags, Naruto revealed. It probably won't be much against a powerhouse like Zabuza, but the tags will slow him down a bit. Good idea. Kakashi commended his sensei's son. Sakura, your job today is to patrol the perimeter. Double check the traps. I want them fully functional and capable of alerting us to any attacks. You two are dismissed. Yes, sensei. Sakura shouted, while Sasuke nodded in response. What about me, Kakashi sensei? Naruto asked expectantly as his teammates left to carry out their orders. Kakashi smiled at his student. I need to talk to you about your eyes. As your commander, I have access to your medical records. I I'm feeling fine. I promise. Naruto exclaimed as worry clouded his tone. Don't worry Naruto. I'm not going to sideline you. I just wanted to make sure that you haven't been too badly affected by the condition. We need you at your best. The young man smiled at Kakashi. I'm feeling really good, sensei. I had a bit of a headache yesterday, but that was mostly because I kinda had a few dozen shadow clones dispel at once. I haven't made that mistake again. Excellent. I'm glad to hear it. Now, we need to discuss your role in our mission. Kakashi crossed his arms. He felt a wave of nostalgia at the smile that adorned Naruto's face. It was so like his mother, Kakashi's unofficial aunt, that it dredged up old wounds. Gato will definitely make a move against Tizuna's family. Sakura and her traps can't cover every area of the forest. Let me guess, Sensei, my shadow clones. Naruto asked with a grin that had become less like Kashina and every bit of Minato. Got it in one, the copy Nin confirmed. Now, I can sustain the few I can make for a few hours. How long can you sustain your shadow clones? Naruto puffed out his cheeks as he thought. Dunno. They just sort of stick around. I had three stick around all day once. It was the day we had to escort that package from the post office to that tile merchant. That D rank mission lasted four hours and we trained for another five. Kakashi silently admitted that he was very impressed. Naruto may have been taking advantage of the Kyuubi's chakra being converted into his own, but that hadn't helped him learn a B rank Kinjutsu in under three hours. Or master the use of the technique in less than a week. Hey, I guess I finally found something I'm good at, Naruto chuckled and scratched the back of his head. Other than eating ramen, naturally, Kakashi's glib reply caused Naruto to start. Other than eating ramen, naturally. The two laughed at Naruto's parroted response. Kakashi nodded. I'm going to continue my recovery. Your orders are to work out a patrol strategy for your shadow clones. In two days, I need everyone ready for war. Sakura stood next to Tazuna as Team 7 escorted the bridge builder and the workers to the construction site. The old man licked his and tried to wring the sweat from his palms. I'm not super on board with this plan. We will protect you. Have faith in Kakashi sensei and in us. Sakura didn't look at the client, but focused on the bridge. The battlefield was already enshrouded in mist. 
that meant one thing. Zabuza was already here. The former Seven Swordsman made a very impactful entrance. He dropped in behind Sakura and cleaved his target in half, or so he thought. Instead of the satisfying experience of steel rending flesh, there was a puff of smoke. Zabuza had eliminated a shadow clone. Damn. The fearsome warrior cursed. He was stunned by the audacity of the small child to throw a pair of kanai at him. The throws were completely average and Zabuza simply dodged. There was no need to waste any chakra on a substitution technique. He barely had time to take advantage of the girl's hesitation when Kakashi erupted from the mist and launched into a vicious taijutsu attack. Zabuza was immediately on his heels. Kakashi was truly worthy of consideration for the position of Hokage. He was leaving almost no exploitable openings while simultaneously preventing Zabuza from putting some distance between the two. Zabuza knew that the Sharingan gave Kakashi a distinct advantage with ninjutsu, but Kenjutsu was Zabuza's primary advantage. He needed to maintain a specific distance so that the Kabikirabocho would be effective. Strike. Zabuza shouted to Haku. Kakashi's Sharingan provided forewarning of the incoming Ice Senbon. The fake hunter Nin landed in front of Sakura and lashed out with a sidekick which knocked the Konoha Kunoichi off her feet. Naruto. Sasuke. Kakashi countered. Two of the cowering workers suddenly attacked the hunter Nin. You're outclassed Zabuza. The hell I am. Zabuza roared and thrust with Kabikirabocho. Kakashi countered with a kanai strike and the construction site became a battle site. Remember, we only need one of them. A heavily tattooed thug whispered as he drew his wakazashi. His associate drew his twin moroha style tanto. I vote to get the woman. We can get more use out of her and killing the kid will make her more cooperative. I like that plan, the tanto equipped criminal hummed in agreement, on three? The mercenaries kicked down the door and charged into the kitchen. Tsunami, Tazuna's daughter was cutting vegetables. She managed to turn to face her home's invaders. W what are you doing here? Tsunami asked and feebly held the knife in front of her. Inari cowered behind the kitchen table. You know why we're here, the first mercenary laughed. Kill the brat, Toru. Toru spun one of his tanto on the palm of his hand. If you come out quietly, I'll kill you quickly. To hell with this. Tsunami growled in an unusual tone of voice and threw the knife at Toru. The blade of the knife embedded itself deeply in the criminal's temple. He was dead before he hit the ground. What? The first mercenary shouted in shock. Inari jumped clear over the table, but disappeared in a puff of smoke. In the boy's place was one of the Konoha shinobi. The blonde Konoha ninja threw one of the plates at the man's head. A swipe of his wakazashi removed the thread of the plate but Tsunami also transformed into the ninja as well. At this point, the mercenary was panicking. He had encountered a few shinobi in his career, but they had all been fresh-faced kids. Whoever this ninja was, he sure as hell wasn't fresh-faced. The hell are you? The mercenary roared. I'm the guy kicking your ass. The shinobi who had taken Tsunami's place declared. There was no chance for Gado's thug to retort as a wet snap filled the kitchen. He cried out as his shattered knee could no longer support his weight. The man fumbled for his sword, but the second blonde-haired bastard knocked him unconscious with a boot to the head. I'll go check on old man Tazuna and his family. Should I get one of the other squaddies to help you clean up the mess? The former Inari asked. Nah, not to clean up. We can use that as part of the ruse. I'll need one of the guys to help drag this jackass upstairs, the tsunami actor said with a shrug before transforming again. The Inari clone shrugged as he whistled and a third clone came downstairs. We better get this one upstairs. I hope the boss ends this mission soon. We're going to run out of room upstairs. I'm not sure there are enough of us upstairs to keep guard, the clone grunted as he dragged the dead weight upstairs. Quit ing and get to work. I'm going to need you to keep the act up. Tsunami, called out as she directed a fourth clone where to dump the corpse. In the basement. A Naruto clone was sitting with Tazuna and his family. Inari sniffled a bit at the war raging above his head. The sounds of death were traumatizing, but he couldn't believe that someone was successfully standing up to Gato. H how are you doing it? Inari asked. Naruto's shadow clone tilted his head. Doing what, kid? Fighting Gato without fear, the young boy replied. No one has ever stood up to him. Because you need me too, the Naruto clone answered without hesitation. Your grandpa is doing something incredible and he deserves the chance to fulfill his dream. 
you deserve the chance to fulfill your dreams. Why you sound like D. Dad, Inari forced out. Tsunami wrapped her son up in a hug. Naruto, put on his thinking face, your dad. Even though he was just a shadow clone and had even less emotional control than his creator, the Naruto knew better than to say something dumb. Kaiza, Tsunami said with a melancholy smile. Tazuna and his daughter took the time to explain the situation to Naruto. The clone was fighting back sniffles at the end. The story hit him hard. He reminds me of Iruka Sensei, the clone admitted. The way you say his name. This Iruka Sensei sounds very important to you. Tsunami prodded in a motherly tone. Naruto nodded and launched into his own tale. Obviously, he did not reveal the Kyubi to near complete strangers. During the story, Inari came to a realization. Kaiza was a hero. He wasn't the last hero as the boy had believed for a long time. He was simply the first and Inari decided that it was time to find the next hero. Haku found herself on the defensive much faster than she had expected. Her opponents were far more skilled than she expected. Sasuke, the dark-headed shinobi, was highly trained in taijutsu. In fact, Haku would go so far as to acknowledge Sasuke as a potential elite. Haku frowned behind the porcelain mask as she flicked her wrist to counter a kanai thrust from Naruto. A thin barrier of ice turned the blade aside. Haku was forced to admit that Naruto was not as skilled as Sasuke, but was unpredictable. Naruto was ready and able to exploit openings. He had an instinctive mastery of his shadow clones and an instinctive ability to work with his teammate. What Naruto lacked in polished ability, he made up for in heart. That, Haku realized, was breaking hers. The emotional lapse was nearly fatal. Haku had completely forgotten to account for the Kunoichi. The girl was nowhere near as skilled as her brothers in arms, but she was still a trained ninja. Haku could sense the chakra molding for a genjutsu. As she blocked on of Sasuke's strikes, Haku used a one-handed seal to dispel the attempt. The unweaving of the genjutsu momentarily threw the pinket off. Haku quickly took advantage of the situation and lashed out with a snap kick. The girl cried out. Even if Haku hadn't broken the wrist, the Konoha Kunoichi's wrist would likely be too bruised to effectively form hand seals. The world suddenly became much brighter and a trickle of warmth graced her left cheek. Haku blinked away the shift in the world's light and the pain in he cheek. A voice soon caused all of her defenses to drop. Haku? Kakashi could feel the strain working its way through his chakra coils. He had not pushed his Sharingan this hard in years. Zabuza was truly a worthy opponent. The former Mist Anbu had learned from his mistakes in the first battle. I need you to look in my eyes, Kakashi growled as he turned yet another swing from Zabuza's sword with a kanai. The sheer force of Zabuza's attacks were taking a toll on Kakashi's supplies. The enormous sword had already destroyed four kanai. Kakashi grimaced behind his trademark mask and jumped onto a thrust of the sword. The chakra and physical energy costs of such a risky move made his body burn, but he had to gain the advantage somehow. He stabbed with his chipped blade and pierced Zabuza in the right eye. Damn it. Kakashi cursed as he was covered in the remnants of Zabuza's water clone. Fortunately, it didn't become a water prison. That would have ended the battle and gotten Kakashi's genin killed. There was no mistaking the next sound. It was the sound of his doom as the Kabikirabocho sliced through the air. Kakashi knew that with his back turned, his Sharingan's predictive abilities couldn't save him. Looks like I will be with you soon. My team. My family. The sound of tearing flesh was not Kakashi's own. It was Naruto. How? Kakashi asked. Hadn't he been fighting the hunter nin? N nice try. Dot you eyebrow less. Bastard. Naruto coughed out before slapping an explosive tag on the legendary Kabikirabocho. A fraction of a second before the tag detonated, the Naruto disappeared in a puff of smoke. The Buddy Clones. I ordered Naruto to only use the Buddy Clones to protect Team 7, Kakashi thought in a panic. The explosion was incredibly damaging to the Kabikirabocho. Zabuza roared as the blade was split in half. It was the best opening Kakashi had all battle. He had to press his advantage. There was no way Hitaki Kakashi would fail another of his teams. You know the enemy? Sasuke asked quickly as he rolled away from a very large spear of ice. I thought I did, Naruto answered. Everyone heard the betrayal in Naruto's voice. Sakura was alternating between cradling her injured, likely broken, wrist and gripping a kanai tightly. 
Sasuke was glaring at the false hunter Nin in a newly crisp world. Sasuke kun. Your eyes. Sakura cried out. Are they red? The Uchiha demanded. Sakura. Are. They. Red? The Kunoichi nodded, but quickly turned her attention back to Haku. Sasuke grinned and re entered his fighting stance, the Sharingan. In that moment, Haku knew that she could not win against Naruto's seemingly endless chakra reserves. He had formed dozens of shadow clones during the battle and barely appeared to have made a dent in his reserves. His clones were minimizing the damage his teammates received by substituting with them. It was a brilliant strategy. Now that Sasuke had the Sharingan, Haku was at a decided disadvantage. Naruto started the attack, but his heart wasn't as resolute as it was earlier. He fainted with a punch and started a jump kick. The kick never followed through and Naruto flopped to the ground. Sakura, as Haku now knew the Kunoichi as, leapt over Naruto and stabbed with her kanai. Haku flew through her unique one-handed seals and threw a whip of water. She quickly followed it up with her bloodline's ability. The whip froze and immobilized the Kunoichi. Naruto and Sasuke were isolated. It was time for Hanku's trump card. Hayden. Demonic Ice Mirrors. The Kabikirabocho was almost completely destroyed by the Shadow Clone's explosive tag. Zabuza and Kakashi had not been able to capitalize on their opponent's shock over the event that led to the sword's destruction. The two veteran shinobi had renewed their battle quickly. Kakashi felt his confidence surge as the conflict shifted towards his strengths. Without Kenjutsu, I have a serious edge in ninjutsu, Kakashi thought. Zabuza rumbled as he jumped away and ran through some hand seals. Your genin are about to discover what fighting a real shinobi is like. Looks like I'm going to have to kill you faster then. Kakashi carried out his own hand seals. Kirigakir no jutsu, Zabuza called out. Summoning, earth release, fang pursuit jutsu, Kakashi said evenly as he slammed his hand onto the bridge. The copy Nin narrowed his eyes and began kneading his chakra. He couldn't afford to waste any opportunity for a certain kill. The Chidori and the Rakery were his most lethal techniques, but he had limited uses. The Rakery was definitely his best bet in this situation. Zabuza was too powerful and his students were in too much danger to risk anything less than complete obliteration of the target. Hang on, my students. I'm not failing anyone today, Kakashi declared. There's something in these damn mirrors. Naruto cussed as he dodged another barrage of Senbon from a ghost like Haku. What are you talking about? Sasuke barked as he finished the horse and tiger seals for his grand fireball jutsu. He held the chakra for a moment and ignored the burning as the jutsu threatened to overwhelm him. Sasuke used his sharingan to time the launch of the jutsu so that Haku was in between mirrors. What? Haku exclaimed before Naruto could answer. She quickly formed a smaller ice mirror to absorb the majority of Sasuke's attack. Unfortunately for Naruto and Sasuke, Haku managed to reach the safety of her mirror with only minor injuries. Naruto growled. His anger was building in a furious burning gathered in his core. The mirrors, they are keeping me from using buddy clones to get us out of here. I'm afraid that you cannot escape from this prison, Haku interjected from the mirrors. Zabuza Sama was very clear on my directives. I am to defeat you so that his ambitions may proceed unhindered. His ambitions? What about yours? Naruto shouted. You're not some object. You're a person. Zabuza Sama has given me purpose. He rescued me from my pain and loneliness. You are a shinobi of Konoha. The two of you could never understand. Bullshit. Sasuke roared. You know nothing about us. My clan was butchered by my own brother. Naruto. Naruto is hated for no damn reason. Don't speak to us of pain and loneliness. You speak truly. Haku nearly cried as she spoke. I can hear the pain in your voice. I can see it in your stances. Forgive me. You will be with those you care about soon. Sakura fumbled with an explosive tag and tried to attach it to one of her remaining kanai. The sounds of Kakashi's intense battle with Zabuza were all around her. A part of her wanted to help her sensei, but she would have only been a burden if she was unhurt. In her current condition, she would be a speed bump for Zabuza. The shock of her death would likely lead to Kakashi's defeat. Her options were limited. Sakura turned to her left as she heard yet another buddy clone dispel. It had used up its chakra trying to free Naruto and Sasuke from Haku's ice dome. Clone San. What's happening? Why isn't the plan working? Sakura asked as she finally fixed the tag around the kanai. 
A sharp thrill of pain shot up her arm and she blinked back tears. She was a kunoichi and her friends and teammates were counting on her. Something in these damn ice blocks is keeping us from getting the boss and the jerk out of there. Sakura frowned. That shouldn't happen. She had never heard of a technique like Haku's. Stand back, I'm throwing this. The kanai was surprisingly accurate, but Haku's mirrors were large enough to not need fantastic aim. Sakura grinned wildly as the explosion tore a huge gash into the ice. The grin died as the ice mirror repaired itself. Damn it. The mirrors are ing all the water vapor out of the air. The heck are you talking about? The clone practically shouted in his confusion. Don't worry about it. Sakura brushed off the clone's question. It really wasn't important. All she knew was that she couldn't help Sasuke and Naruto. They were on their own. She was about to pray for some form of divine intervention, when an inhuman roar split the air. Sakura had received her intervention, but there was no way it was divine. A Jinchuriki. You've got a damn Jinchuriki. Zabuza roared. He couldn't believe that Konoha was so casually deploying a vital strategic weapon. You just made a huge mistake, Kakashi countered darkly. The bridge around Zabuza erupted and eight Ninkan tore into Zabuza. The former swordsman of the mist was immobilized. I'm going to show you something. It's my original jutsu. You should be honored. Most of my targets only hear the technique. Kakashi quickly went through his hand seals and gathered his chakra. Zabuza's eyes went wide. Son of A. I can see the chakra. What kind of jutsu is this? I promised that your future would be death, Kakashi said harshly. You've threatened my genin. I like my genin. So, Zabuza, I'm going to like this, Rakuri. The demon of the hidden mist felt the small pug like Ninkan sever his Achilles tendon. The summoned Ninkan Kantan to hold Zabuza in place as Kakashi began his charge. So this is it. At least I'll die in battle against a foe worth my time. Zabuza found that his thoughts held an odd serenity. He stood straighter as the Ninkan vanished. I'm going to meet my end with some goddamn dignity, Zabuza declared. In the end, he welcomed death as an old friend. S. Sasuke, Naruto shouted. What the hell? Dot why? D don't know, Sasuke coughed. I'm not. Losing anyone else. Naruto stared at the Senban riddled form of his best friend in mute shock. The Jinchuriki looked up at the mirrors and Haku looked away. Naruto, if you. If you find Itachi. Shut up. You'll find him yourself. Naruto demanded of Sasuke. Naruto's friend was silent. No. No. Fire welled in Naruto's gut and he screamed. The boy screamed for his loss. Screamed at Haku's betrayal. Screamed at the injustice of it all. Naruto had finally achieved some measure of his dreams. He had received Sasuke's acknowledgement and friendship. Now, that had been stolen away. Naruto's instinctive fear of loneliness roared forth. Strangely, there was a coldness that accompanied the fire. Naruto did not notice much beyond that final observation. He became his rage. In the mirrors, Haku took an instinctive step backwards as Chakra, malignant and red, snaked its way from the core of Naruto's being. Is that ice? Haku whispered as the foul chakra began to freeze. It is. How is it possible? Haku thought in in panic. Her memory snapped back to the night she had found Naruto lying on the forest floor. She had seen his eyes change and had temporarily lost control of her bloodline limit. He assimilated my bloodline. That. That's impossible. Haku gasped as the foul chakra connected with the mirrors. She quickly focused her remaining reserves to bolstering her mirrors, but the sheer amount of Naruto's chakra was overwhelming. Haku could barely keep command of the mirror she currently resided in. Naruto's outburst and unnatural technique had already conquered four mirrors. You took my friend. Disappear. Naruto cried in anguish and rage. Haku had never experienced power on this level before. She was certain that even Zabuza-sama would not be able to withstand such fury. Haku realized that if she did not escape the mirrors, she would likely die. The pocket dimension that resided behind the mirrors was unaffected by Naruto's assault, but the exits to the material world were rapidly winking out of existence. Naruto-kun. Haku shouted without thought. She pushed forward, but the Konoha ninja's ice materialized in front of her. The palms of Haku's skin and a bit of her ankle instantly suffered from frostnip. The sudden itch and pain distracted Haku. Her chakra was thrown off and two more mirrors were compacted into nothingness by Naruto's unconscious and uncontrolled jutsu. 
Haku knew fear as the last of her reserves left her. She watched as the final vestiges of her mirrors collapsed. Sakura and the remaining shadow clones rushed towards Sasuke and Naruto. The lone Kunoichi skidded to a stop as a strange red chakra receded into Naruto. What kind of jutsu was that? The foul feeling disappeared with the last of the red cloud. Sakura ran up to Sasuke with tears in her eyes. The last Uchiha's body was riddled with Senban. Strangely, the weapons were melting. They. They must have been created by Haku. Talk to me. Talk to me Sasuke-kun. Sakura screamed. There was a sudden pressure on her shoulder. Sakura looked up to her sensei with exhausted and tear-stained eyes. Despite her current trauma, she gasped as she stared into Kakashi's Sharingan. I wouldn't stare at my Sharingan. Even if I am not actively using it, there will be effects, Kakashi warned gently. After Sakura looked away, he continued. Do you remember what Haku did to Zabuza? Sakura rubbed away her tears. P put him in a death-like state. You have the best memory of any Kunoichi I've ever seen, Kakashi complimented his Kunoichi student. Where did the Senban strike Zabuza? The neck. Sakura recalled. Sasuke. Sasuke-kun is alive. She quickly checked the Uchiha's pulse in several locations. There was a weak pulse in his wrist. Sakura leaned close to Sasuke's nose and felt a small breath tickle her ears. Naruto. Sakura cried triumphantly. Naruto, he's alive. The Jinchuriki suddenly turned around. His eyes lit up with hope and excitement. However, Kakashi and Sakura noticed that something was wrong with Naruto's eyes. They were not his natural blue. Instead, they were a black rimmed purple. The colors were not the most striking feature of the eyes. That honor belonged to the double helix snaking in the location Naruto's irises and pupils should have been. Does. Does Naruto have a dojutsu? Sakura asked. Kakashi observed the dojutsu with his Sharingan for a moment before covering Obito's eye. The color and intensity of Naruto's chakra was very unusual. I will have to speak to the Hokage about this. I'm not sure, Sakura. Kakashi had to catch himself before he offhandedly mentioned Naruto's parents. Is he really going to be okay? Naruto shouted. Naruto? Sasuke coughed. Sakura. Dot and Kakashi. He asked in confusion. Naruto laughed in desperate relief. Looks like you can't palm Itachi off on me after all. You get to kill him yourself. Well, isn't this a touching little moment? A sniveling voice interrupted the moment. I'd like to thank you for eliminating Zabuza. I wish you hadn't killed his pretty little assistant. I would have doubled my offer to you all if I could have purchased her. Gato. Kakashi spat in disgust. The one and only. Gato announced theatrically and spun to face his three score force of mercenaries. Now, I realize that Tazuna is not here. You shinobi are truly masters of shadow and deception. I have an offer for you and your village. We're not interested. We've given our word, you short. Naruto growled. Kakashi felt his back stiffen involuntarily. The Kyubi had begun to grant Naruto access to its chakra again. He agreed with Naruto, but was terrified of the possibilities of a rampage. Shame. Guess I'll just kill everyone then, Gato shrugged. Have fun boys. Enough Gato. A voice cried out from the other side of the bridge. Tazuna was leading the majority of Wave's inhabitants. The citizens were armed with a collection of machetes, clubs, and even a few crossbows and polearms. Your tyranny is over. Gato and his thugs laughed cruelly. Even if you have shinobi, you can't win. They are exhausted. You've just damned your men to torture and earned your women employment in my brothels. I'm sending you to hell. Naruto shouted. Sakura took a step back from her teammate as Naruto's eyes began taking on a reddish tint. His pupils reappeared, but where animalistic slits. Multiple shadow clone jutsu. Shadow clone jutsu. Kakashi style. Kakashi joined his student. There were nearly 300 Naruto's and dozens of Kakashi's. The sudden appearance of nearly a thousand enemies caused the thugs to hesitate. Naruto felt the fire return and snake its way from his core. In that moment, he realized that he was accessing the Kyubi and its chakra. He didn't care. Naruto decided to mold the chakra for an attack. He wasn't sure what he could do, but dove deep into his own mind. His explorations discovered the foundation of a memory. There was ice. Haku's ice. The sting of Haku's betrayal was still present but Naruto could recognize an advantage when he found it. On this, Naruto sneered. 
He felt his chakra hook into the memory and draw the ice release out. Naruto slammed his hands onto the bridge. A field of ice spikes fired out from the stones and crashed into the midst of Gato's army. The clones smirked and repeated the action. The ice bolts were joined by a hail of crossbow bolts. The army was routed almost instantly. The screams of the dying filled the air. Occasionally, the splash of thugs jumping off the bridge to safety punctuated a volley. There was blood in the water and the sharks would no doubt eat well. Tazuna led Inari and a group of Waves men across to where Team 7 was recovering. You are all heroes. You defeated Gato's army and gave us hope again. The land of Waves is forever in your debt. Team 7 were too exhausted to blush, but were touched by the sincerity. Before Kakashi could reply, a pair of Naruto's clones dragged a severely wounded Gato over to the group. What do you guys want to do with him? What do you think? Tazuna spat with poisonous anger. We're going to hang him. I don't have rope, but I have wire, Sakura added helpfully. Tazuna patted Sakura on her head. Thanks lass, but this is something Wave must do itself. Team 7 left Wave a day and a half later. The Genin were very eager to return home. Everything had changed and they were eager to explore the changes. A huge and raucous crowd faded Team 7 as they departed. We need to name the bridge, Tazuna said softly to his grandson. Inari was sitting on his grandfather's shoulders. The boy rested his chin on the top of Tazuna's head. How about the great Naruto bridge? Yes. Tazuna agreed. There was a murmur of approval in the crowd as well. It will bring us good fortune to be connected to someone destined for greatness like Uzumaki Naruto. Team 7 was grateful that their two days of mandatory recovery were over. The Hokage was well aware of Sasuke and Naruto's determination and habits. Thus, the mandatory recovery period was practically house arrest. Naruto, in particular, had to be constantly monitored. Hiruzen had, at first jokingly, assigned Amino Uruka AC rank mission to enforce the no training orders. To the Hokage and Uruka's surprise, what had begun as a joke mission had become a legitimate mission. Sasuke and Sakura wished they had been there to witness Naruto's 37 escape attempts. It would have helped with their own mind-crushing boredom. Kazashi and Mebuki had been very determined to ensure that their precious cherry blossom recovered and enforced the recovery period as if it was house arrest. Sasuke, though. Sasuke had undergone the worst of all tortures. He was not watched over by the academy teacher he had adopted as a big brother figure. He was not attended to by his parents. The Uchiha survivor had the tragic fate of hanging out with his beloved sensei, Kakashi had decided to crash at Sasuke's apartment while the Jonin's own was being fumigated. Sasuke was convinced that if the recovery period had extended into a third day that his Sharingan would have fully matured in a desperate attempt to help Sasuke escape. Kakashi spent nearly 40 of the 48 hours attempting to evangelize Sasuke in the ways of the Icha Icha series. Team 7 had never been so glad to see each other. Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke exchanged their experiences under mandatory recovery. The conversation was pleasant until Naruto indulged his ego. They named a bridge after me. That kick-ass ice release thingy I did wiped out all of Gato's thugs. When we were leaving, Inari. Dot who isn't as big of a brat as we thought. Said he'd try to get a holiday named after all of us. But. I have. A bridge. Named. After. Me. Sasuke ground his teeth. He was proud of what Team 7 had accomplished during the mission to wave. A part of Sasuke wondered if liberating an entire country was something Itachi had done at age 13. The Uchiha also knew that Naruto had received almost zero acknowledgement his entire life. Still, Sasuke's friend had been going on about the damn bridge for at least 15 minutes. I know, you've mentioned it, Sasuke said flatly. Kakashi suddenly appeared behind Team 7. If it helps, the national holiday in Wave is on July 7th and is named after all of Team 7. Oh. That does help. Sakura spoke up before shrieking in surprise. She spun and attempted to backfist the source of the voice in a reflexive defensive action. Kakashi casually caught his Kunoichi student's swing. Not bad, Sakura. That'll help you with your training. We're heading to the Hokage's office. After everything that happened in Wave, I need to prepare you all for the new reality you have discovered. Team 7 recognized Kakashi's normal flippant tone but there was an edge to it they were unfamiliar with outside of combat. The curiosity weighed on them heavily as they fell in behind Kakashi. Chunin guards and secretaries stood aside for Team 7. 
In reality, it was due to Kakashi's reputation. That did not stop Team 7 from indulging in vanity. They embraced the idea that the Chunin were stepping aside for them. Of course, this just fed into Naruto's newly recognized ego. Sasuke had just started to promote Naruto from tolerable to actual teammate. He couldn't blame Naruto for his pride. Sasuke's pride was one of his few possessions. It was just that Naruto had crossed over into hubris. The worst part was. Dot the blonde headed hyperactive knucklehead hadn't acknowledged Sasuke's contributions or near death. It stung just a bit. The musing was cut short as Team 7 entered the Hokage's office. Sarutobi Hirazan was a legend and every member of Team 7 respected him greatly. The third Hokage radiated a grandfatherly aura to the loyal citizens of Konoha. He was directing that sense of grandfatherly pride at every member of Team 7. Team 7, I can tell that you are grateful to return to active duty, the Hokage began. Konoha, and the entire Land of Fire, thanks you for your efforts in the Land of Waves. Our daimyo has taken a personal interest in the aftermath of your first true shinobi mission. The Hokage allowed the children an excited moment where they exchanged proud exclamations for their future. In truth, this sentimentality was also a strategic consideration. Simply put, Uzumaki Naruto and Uchiha Sasuke were strategic assets of the highest order. Hiruzen knew that maintaining the delicate balance of contentedness and an edge was vital. Naruto and Sasuke were too valuable to risk any thoughts of disloyalty. As the Jinchuriki of the Kiyubi and the last loyal possessor of the Sharingan, the boys were walking weapons of mass destruction. The daimyo and Hiruzen required Naruto and Sasuke to be powerful shinobi and serve as an indomitable deterrent to Kumo's militarism. The Hokage was somewhat disappointed that none of Team 7, even book smart Sakura, questioned how the daimyo had discovered the results of the wave mission so quickly. In order to ensure that you reach your potential as quickly as possible, we are accelerating your training. Team 7 will still work together, but additional training has been arranged. Naruto and Sasuke were especially happy by this development. Sakura faced a moment of apprehension, but the successes in Wave bolstered her confidence. What kind of training, old man? Is it super badass jutsu? Naruto asked hopefully. An amused chuckle escaped the wizened Hokages, perhaps in time. He paused a moment. First off, Miss Haruno, Kakashi and I have decided that increasing your skills in taijutsu and psychical conditioning would provide the greatest boon for you. Thank you. Hokage-sama, Sakura replied formally and automatically. She wasn't hugely thrilled by practicing taijutsu because her real hope was to study genjutsu or medical ninjutsu. Still, it wasn't the best idea to argue with the Hokage. You will meet with Might Guy, Sensei of Team 9. Today at 4 p.m. he will hone your potential to an extent few, if any, in Konoha can. The Hokage finished his statement with a nod. Kakashi smiled. You'll be stuck with me, Sasuke. Someone has to teach you how to use your eyes. What about me? Naruto interrupted. The Hokage leaned back in his chair. We know nothing about your dojutsu, Naruto. Have you any idea how to even activate the dojutsu? Uh, not really, Naruto confessed. Can't I work with Sasuke and Kakashi sensei? Kakashi shook his head. Sorry, Naruto. We'll still work together. It's just there are some very specific Sharingan techniques Sasuke has to learn. They need to be kept as secret as possible. Clan stuff? Naruto asked glumly. Clan stuff, kiddo, Kakashi apologized. Clan stuff, Sasuke thought. He was still a bit annoyed with Naruto. At least he had somewhat calmed down. But, Naruto interjected cautiously. Sasuke is the only other person I really know that has a dojutsu. I thought we were going to train together. You know, like teammates. Okay, Sasuke thought. Maybe I'm underselling just how desperate Naruto was for acknowledgement. I always wanted father to recognize me, but at least I had mom. His annoyance vanished as an idea flashed into his head. A smile worked its way onto Sasuke's face. Actually, I think you know someone with a dojutsu. I do? Sasuke and Sakura exchanged a look. Sakura leaned forward, flabbergasted. You don't remember Hanada? Of course, Naruto shot back at Sakura. I just don't really know her, that's all. The last Uchiha had just let his annoyance go, but he still wanted to get Naruto back a little bit for being so obnoxious. Sasuke recalled that Hanada was very quiet and really socially awkward. That nature would clash mightily with Naruto's personality. 
the resulting awkwardness might get Naruto to mellow finally. A glance over to Sakura confused the Uchiha greatly. Sakura is amused. Why is she amused? Sasuke wondered. What? Oh, you'll see. Sakura answered in a sing-song voice that only a girl lording a secret over someone could manage. Something up, Sakura-chan? Naruto asked, confused by the exchange. The pinkette was gleeful at the momentary edge she was in possession of. Nothing, Naruto. I think this training will be very beneficial. Oh? Naruto asked excitedly. Sakura grinned sweetly, yet nigh maniacally. That's awesome. Thanks Sakura-chan. The Hokage had allowed Team 7 their moment. I believe Sasuke-kun and Sakura-chan have made a splendid suggestions. Team 8 is currently completing a D-rank mission. Naruto-kun, you have leave to work with them for the day. Please respectfully ask Hanada-chan to assist you. Remember, you want my position one day. Of course, old man. Naruto answered emphatically. Well, Hanada-chan is the heiress of the Hyuga clan. Offending her in any way would harm your future candidacy, Hiruzen explained. Wow. I thought she was just kind of shy and nice. Didn't realize she was a big deal. I guess it's cool she didn't let things go to her head. Naruto finished with a shrug. With that, the Hokage dismissed Team 7. Kakashi and Sasuke headed off for a secluded area. Good luck with your training, boys. Sakura called out as she watched her sensei and teammates head off. Now. I wonder if anyone knows about Guy sensei I should have asked Kakashi-sensei, but. Oh well. Uzumaki Naruto loved the memory transfer part of the cage bunshin technique. It was so useful. Especially now, as it would have taken a very very long time to track down Team 8. Their D-rank mission was tracking down a missing pet. Team 8 is perfect for that. They are a tracking team. I wonder what is causing it to take so long. Why is it a bird? Kiba shouted as Naruto rounded the corner. And Kurinai sensei, when will Hanada be back? Soon. I trust that Hanada will come through for us, Kurinai assured her male students, who responded with simple nods, and it seems we have a guest. Hi everybody? Naruto asked. What's up, Naruto? Kiba counter asked. Kurinai wanted to roll her eyes at male communication. How are you? Uzumaki-san. I'm good, Kurinai-sensei. Oh, hi Shino. Naruto waved to everyone. Shino nodded respectfully. Kurinai cleared her throat. May I ask why you have been trying to track us all day? Naruto sheepishly rubbed the back of his head. I, uh, really need Hanada to help me with something and I'm not sure I can talk about it much. Old man Hokage was pretty. Uh, clear on that. It can't possibly be about that could it? Kurinai wondered. Naruto-san. Where is your team? Shino questioned. Well, after that mission to wave, the old man said we need special training. Sakura-chan is going to be working with Gai-sensei, whoever the heck that is. Kurinai wanted to laugh. That poor girl. I almost considered requesting her for my team based off her genjutsu potential, but her physical condition needed someone like Kakashi to help her achieve her full potential. And your sensei and Sasuke-san. Shino pressed. Sharingan stuff. Super secret, Naruto whispered conspiratorially, which worked beautifully to put Shino and Kiba at ease. As for me, I need Hanada's help, but I'm not sure I can talk about it. Hokage's orders. The two boys nodded. So, Hokage send you to shadow us? A bit, yeah. I mean, everybody knows Akamaru has the best manners of anyone we know. Naruto shrugged. The Ninkan howled a, eh? don't you know it? Message. Everyone was laughing as Hanada arrived. Kurinai sensei, I am back. Welcome back, Hanada, Kurinai greeted her student. Did you get what Shino suggested? Yes, Kurinai sensei, Hanada responded quickly. She dashed over and handed the bird seed to her commander. Thank you, Hanada. Oh, we also have a guest for this mission, Kurinai said with a knowing smile. Hi, Hanada. Hanada froze and went ramrod straight at the sound of the voice. She desperately wished that she had mastered her Byakugan enough to not need the hand seal sequence yet. Hanada was close, but hadn't quite mastered it yet. Fortunately, she was still a year ahead of schedule. That meant she wasn't a total failure in one regard according to her father. H hello, Naruto-kun. In an effort to rescue his teammate from a total meltdown, Kiba cleared his throat. So, can we rescue the bird now? Oh, right. 
Hinata squeaked and produced the bird seed. Shino called out to the pet using a phrase the owner had provided. The bird came quickly. Kiba reacted just as quickly and got the bird into the cage. Mission success, Kurenai said with relieved humor. We can head back to the Hokage's tower and receive our payment. Naruto, you can come along. Yes, Kurenai sensei, team 8 responded in unison. Thanks, Kurenai sensei, Naruto boomed. The genin followed the janin back to the Hokage's tower. Naruto held back as Team 8 delivered their report and received their pay vouchers. It wasn't his place to say anything, and he was curious to see how other teams handled their debriefings. Naruto also took the opportunity to daydream that he was the one receiving the debriefing from a genin team and giving a quick speech on how this stuff is actually important. Shino kun and Kiba kun, the Hokage's words cut Naruto's daydream short. I will need a moment with your sensei, teammate, and Naruto kun. Kiba and Shino bowed to their supreme commander, exchanged a look, and left to go get something to eat. Naruto strolled, hands in his pockets, over to where Hinata and Kurenai were standing in front of Serutobi Hiruzen. I trust young Naruto was as subtle as possible about his request, Hiruzen teased. Naruto mentioned that he probably couldn't talk about his request out in the open, Kurenai confirmed. The Hokage nodded. Excellent. He is learning. The following is a B-rank secret, and thus requires my expressed permission is required to divulge any information on this topic. Understood. Hokage-sama, Kurenai said automatically. Of course, Lord Hokage, Hinata readily agreed. Naruto-kun has a dojutsu that we have never encountered before. He has only activated it recently to our knowledge. Hinata gulped. Hokage-sama, if I, if I may. Is there an observation or insight you would like to provide, Hinata-chan? The professor asked. Naruto kun activated his dojutsu in the past. The day after the incident with the three bullies during the academy, I was going to give Naruto kun a textbook he had left in class. He was in a great deal of pain, and Jonin Kandan Tekuno helped Naruto kun get to the hospital. The Hokage nodded. He was surprised that the Hyuga heiress remembered the incident. Did you see Naruto kun's dojutsu? I. I believe so. His eyes became a solid amethyst color with an odd, dot odd squiggly design. Hanada struggled to recall that moment. So you say, Hiruzen lit a pipe. It appears Sasuke kun's suggestion was quite prescient. Kurenai raised an eyebrow at the exchange. It was all quite fascinating. Another dojutsu could be a very powerful asset for the village. I do wonder if the Kiyubi would have any impact on Naruto's bloodline. Hanada chan. Serutobi announced after a drag on his pipe. I am assigning you a long-term B-rank mission. You will assist Naruto-kun in leaning how to reliably activate his dojutsu and provide joint reports on the nature of his bloodline limit. Of course, Hokage-sama. Hanada could not agree to the assignment fast enough. As the Hokage outlined the details and expectations more thoroughly, Naruto barely heard what the old man was saying as he racked his brain trying to remember the thing Hanada was talking about. There were flashes, but nothing concrete. Still, the fact that Hanada remembered and was showing this much enthusiasm about helping him was awesome. I believe Training Ground 14 would be the best location for having Hanada assist Naruto with his dojutsu, Kurenai suggested. An excellent suggestion, Serutobi concurred. If you would escort the genin to the training ground, Kurenai sensei. Kurenai bowed at the implicit message. Naruto and Hanada followed suit, though Naruto added a wave. The genin followed at a casual pace behind Kurenai. Training ground 14 is one of the more private grounds, Kurenai said as they arrived. You should be able to practice here without interference. Hanada bowed. Thank you, sensei. I am confident that this training will be done in a professional way, Kurenai's eyes as much as her words bored deeply into Naruto's soul. Oh of course. Naruto gulped. Good, Kurenai said chipperly. Women are scary. Hanada doesn't seem too bad, though, Naruto pondered. And Naruto kun, do you remember what it was like when you activated your dojutsu? Hanada asked. I was kinda angry at the time, but I remember. Pressure, I guess, behind my eyes. You ever fill up a water balloon a bit too much? Naruto concluded with a question. Hanada nodded. It kinda felt like that. That means you haven't learned to regulate the chakra following to your eyes. We need to work on that in order for you to properly activate your dojutsu. Ah, man. You mean, we can't just skip to the cool stuff? 
Naruto whined. Hanada giggled, but rolled her eyes. I'm afraid not, Naruto-kun. Would you skip stretching before training? Heck no. Pulling a muscle s. Naruto complained. The principle is the same, Naruto-kun. Except. Instead of pulling a muscle. Hanada was nervous about how to break the news. This was a troubling subject, after all. How bad? Hanada gulped. Your eyes could explode. Naruto laughed nervously. Hanada, you are pranking me, right? And no, I'm afraid that I'm not pranking you. There are records of, Branch, Hyuga suffering that fate when they attempted to activate their Byakugan improperly. I don't want my eyes to explode, Naruto screamed. I don't want your pretty eyes to explode either, Hanada tried to calm Naruto. Huh. What did you say about my eyes? Naruto asked quickly. And nothing important. We should get started on that chakra exercise. Hanada quickly exclaimed to cover her slip. I can't believe I said that out loud. Uchiha Sasuke was exhausted, but satisfied. He was learning a great deal from Kakashi about the Sharingan. The last Uchiha just wished Kakashi hadn't lied about team training being a thing. Sasuke hadn't seen Naruto or Sakura in two days. I'm actually missing those two. Sasuke's admission was stunning. The last thing that he thought he had wanted was to form bonds. Sasuke couldn't deny the reality. Somehow, Naruto and Sakura had become his friends. As he wandered the streets of Konoha, Sasuke shoved his hands into his pockets. His conflict needed some kind of outlet. Preferably an outlet that would let me gauge my progress with Kakashi. It wasn't just his progress with Kakashi, Sasuke realized. He thought back to the tree climbing exercise back in Wave. Naruto and Sakura had pushed him to exceed what Sasuke believed were his limits at the time. That man had told Sasuke the path to power and revenge was a solitary path, but Sasuke had advanced more in the past couple of months with the aid of others than he thought possible. Which led back to Sasuke's original surprising though. He was missing Team 7, he was missing his friends. Sasuke-kun. Sakura called out. Sasuke smiled, but quickly felt a pang of habitual worry. The normal response would be for Sakura to squeal and ask for a date that Sasuke, frankly, had no interest in. He wasn't opposed to dating. It was just too early for that sort of thing. Is everything okay? Sasuke asked out of a mix of curiosity and concern. I'm just glad that Team 7 will be working together again, Sakura admitted. Guy Sensei and Lee Kun are beyond hardcore when it comes to physical conditioning and taijutsu. I might even be able to keep up with you and Naruto for a bit now. I look forward to seeing it, Sasuke said noncommittally. He was waiting for the date requests to start flowing. Well, I'll see you at training with Kakashi Sensei. I have to knock out this 5k run, or I'll disappoint Guy Sensei and Lee Kun. Sasuke could only watch as Sakura jogged off. That hadn't gone anything like how Sasuke had expected it to go. But, Sasuke could respect the drive Sakura had demonstrated. This is so weird. Sasuke's thoughts turned to his other teammate and friend. The whole concept of accepting friendship was very alien. There was no denying that Sasuke felt better since opening up, but it went against the worldview that that man had instilled in him that awful night. But isn't that a reason to reject that mindset? The jolt forced Sasuke to shelve that line of thought. He wasn't quite prepared to confront the possibilities that lay along that path at the moment. Instead, Sasuke doubled down on his quick run to the store to pick up some things he had run out of at home. Sasuke's eye arched of its own accord as he rounded the corner. Uzumaki Naruto was standing in front of a giggling Hayuga Hanada. Naruto was resting his hands behind his head and stretching to appear a bit taller. Hanada was struggling to maintain eye contact and contain her blush, but she was leaning forward and pulling her shoulders in. It was just like that man in Izumi. So much for the get Naruto to mellow out through awkward social encounters. Sasuke thrust his hands in his pockets and slowly approached. It'd be a real move to interrupt a moment like that. I it's just a C rank, Naruto-kun, Hanada pointed out. I know, but it's been, fun ya know. Training and, uh, that one post-training lunch that we need to do again. I don't believe it, he stammered. The heck? How is that even working? Sasuke wondered. We can resume our training when I get back, Hanada said with slight hesitation. A and I would love a post-training lunch. Naruto continued to beam. Sasuke didn't hear what Naruto said next as it was not quite whispered to Hanada. 
The Hyuga heiress smiled broadly and was as red as Sasuke's sharingan. Once Hinata, eventually, walked away Sasuke called out to Naruto, Hey, Naruto. Oh. Sup Sasuke? Naruto asked as he turned around. The training with Hinata has been going well? Sasuke asked. Naruto nodded enthusiastically. It's been awesome. She taught me how to activate my dojutsu. Figured out what it does? Sasuke asked his follow-up. Uh. Dot not quite. We were going to work on that later. Naruto finished with a shrug. So, want to see it? Sure. The Uchiha agreed with a smirk. Maybe I can get a spar out of this. I want to see results of my training. Naruto grinned. Kuranai Sensei suggested training ground 14. It's out of the way. Can't have all your super secret Sharingan secrets out in the open now, can we? Thinking like a ninja, the raven haired boy sniped in good humor. Someone on our team has to. Naruto shot back without hesitation. Sasuke couldn't help but smirk. He'd probably get a spar out of this after all. Sasuke was excited to see how Naruto would utilize his cage bunshins and if Sasuke could overcome them. The two boys arrived at the training ground. Naruto grinned. You ready, Sasuke? Sasuke lifted his chin. I'm sure you're eager to show off. The Uzumaki shinobi laughed as he went through the hand seals Hinata had worked with Naruto on. Okay, I'm ready to go. Naruto quickly finished going through the hand seals a second time and activated his dojutsu. Sasuke was surprised by the purple hue and black, spiraling double helix design. I've never seen anything like that, Sasuke said flatly. I am not sure there's anything like that in my clan's records. So, nothing? Sasuke shook his head. Sorry, Naruto, but no. We'll figure it out. Naruto accepted the apology with a shrug. Hey, can I see the Sharingan? I only saw it a bit when we were in wave. Sasuke focused his chakra into his eyes and reveled in the sensation of the awakening his Sharingan. That is awesome. Naruto exclaimed. Naruto's hand found its way to Sasuke's shoulder. We're going to be awesome. Sasuke's face hardened. What have you done? What? Naruto yelped. What are you talking about? I know there was like a static shock thing, and I'm sorry for that, but it wasn't that bad was it? You. Stole. My. Sharingan. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.